tonight. This time we have our uh, buddy Cap join. If you guys are from the Twitch audience, you might remember Cap from the Young Justice episode that we did, as well as the episode on The Boys that we did as well. So we figured since this is another like comic book related episode, we'd bring Cap back on. How you doing tonight, Cap? Doing great. Glad to be back. Boys, we're back once again, and unfortunately, we lost another episode. Good news, bad news, folks at home. I got a new PC that runs really, really smooth. Bad news. I lost the video files in the memory backup. So, couldn't upload this week's episode, unfortunately. However, all my important stuff uh, made it over, so that's fine. I'll take that trade. But yeah, this week we are talking about Across the Spider-Verse. A movie we've been hyping up for a while now, and uh, we're gonna see if that movie lived up to that hype. So, to get started, let's go ahead and just talk about our general feelings on the first Spider-Verse movie. Because, I mean, that one was a huge game changer. Not only for Sony-related Spider-Man stuff, but for animation in general. I mean, if you look at the landscape of animation right now, everything is trying to ape on the Spider-Verse style. I mean, I'd argue that Puss in Boots, the best animated movie that's come out this year, really capitalized on it well. We'll start with you, Cap, since you're our guest. All right, well, let's see. So, uh, the first one was really great. I loved it. It brought together a lot of fun little corners of the Spider-Man mythos that aren't usually tapped into, because usually it's a lot of Peter stuff, it's the symbiote saga. We got, we got a lot of cool ones. We got Spider-Man Noir, we got Spider-Ham, and... Everybody got to play off each other really well. It was an actual good use of Miles' family, which is a comic first, <laughs> I'm sad to say. Uh, unfortunately, that is pretty true. As a comic fan, I will be the first to admit that the biggest issue with Miles, even though I'm a fan because I, you know, I grew up on the Ultimate Spider-Man series, read it from the start all the way up until the end. Uh, but with Miles, how he first started off was just kind of generic good black kid. Like, he was just black Peter Parker. And it also didn't help that at the time, he didn't have his own supporting cast. He was just using dead Peter's supporting cast. There's a little bit of that too with Aunt May, but it's not egregious in the movie. It's, it's also one of those things like... Of course there's going to be Aunt May. You can't not have Aunt May in a Spider-Man story. It, yeah, it just wouldn't feel right. It, you know how uh, Miles started, right? Oh, yeah. It started with everybody's favorite comic author, Brian Michael Bendis, and his fascination with his own... I don't know. if I think it's his daughter. It is his daughter. Also, it came from the controversy of the rumor that came out that Donald Glover was up for playing Amazing Spider-Man. Oh, that's not a rumor. Oh, right. He, uh, he auditioned for it, and they said, you'd be great, but you're black. Oh, right. Which, surprisingly, is usually a problem with animated characters, because, like... No, uh, this, cross... was, uh, this was Amazing Spider-Man, like, the Andrew Garfield one, like, before... Oh, Andrew, oh, like, oh, like, they, when they were doing When, when okay. they were doing the casting for that, they were like, you'd be great. You really would, but... The world's not ready for a black Spider-Man. He even put it in his uh, stand-up comedy routine too. Like that was one of his that was one of his bigger jokes in his early stand-up was that you know I could have been Spider-Man, y'all, but they gave it to some British guy instead. Also, a fantastic use of Kingpin and the lesser, the lesser-known parts of Kingpin's character with his with his wife and son, because usually they're like a, a peripheral part in the background of Kingpin stories, or usually. Because Kingpin kind of became a daredevil character in more recent I, times. I gotta say, it's great to see the Kingpin as a Spider-Man villain. No one remembers that Kingpin was a Spider-Man villain that just got stolen by Daredevil because Daredevil didn't have anyone interesting. The one cool thing for the future, you know who does remember that Kingpin was a Spider-Man villain? Vincent D'Onofrio. Oh, yeah. I, I hope so. I oh, he really, was a fantastic king. I really kid. hope so. I, I, I love Vincent D'Onofrio getting to just be unhinged. And, oh. like, the voice he uses is so great. Just the, well, yeah, sn the, the snarls and grunts he puts in the middle of his sentences. Oh, dude. Mm -hmm. that, the the D'Onofrio, one of the best interpretations of the kingpin in uh, comic comic adaptation media in general look the best part of hawkeye was the fact that he showed up i was like all right 
Okay, this show is at least a 6 out of 10 now that the uh, the Kingpin isn't here. Man, pet he, Kingpin's a good New York villain. Because he mm -hmm. can... He's, he's street level, but he's got the power backing of his criminal empire behind him. So he can go up against anybody but, like... The big, big hitters like Thor or Iron Man. He's got. I mean, like even a... Iron Man, he can he can kind of do a little like. Yeah, the business manipulation stuff. Yeah, yeah. like he's got like a Hans Gruber like kind of kind of vibe to him, and he's got like yeah. almost a uh, Doctor Doom. Hans Gruber had the build kind of, of a sumo wrestler. Oh, I mean, yeah. look, if I'm telling you, if Hans Gruber did the fusion dance with E Honda, we would get Kingpin. That's what. That's Pretty exactly much. who it would. True. Also, yep, mixed with a brick wall. Also, if you can be intimidating in a fucking Hawaiian shirt when you're built like that, man, oh yeah, you're set. You're pretty much set. Big facts. Oh yeah, big facts. Also, one thing I really liked about uh, Into the Spider-Verse, they used the an interpretation of a 2099 Doc Ock that I really enjoyed. Yeah. That being yeah. female Doc Ock. Oh, was that like... the is that the origin of female Doc Ock with the yep. squishy arms? Yeah, she first came in. I thought she was familiar, but I couldn't pin down where they took her from. Yep, she's from 2099, which is why people immediately speculated that the second one was going to have uh, Miguel in it. Which ah, you know, oh, love Miguel. Coming. Oh yeah, yeah. but that's 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 yeah, for yeah. later in the podcast. Well, yeah, well, yeah, we'll talk. Yeah, we'll talk about that in the main discussion. But yeah, uh, I really enjoyed... also we got a glimpse of. Um... Catherine Hahn as a Marvel villain before she did her full grace as Agatha. Oh yeah, that's true. Mm. Fantastic in both roles. Unfortunately sidelined because of the weird way they went with that plot, but that's not this podcast. Yeah. Definitely. Unfortunate, but true. So, like, I think the biggest thing, and you know, as we talked about in an earlier point uh, with the first movie, is uh, they actually give Miles a personality here. Like I said, he's just generic good black kid in the comics in the beginning. He's just black Peter Parker. He's a kid who's smart, but down in his luck, overall has a really good heart and a good family. You know, generic. But with this, he has more of a personality. He's an artist. He loves music. He, you know, has a bit of a rebellious streak. It's, you know, it's that classic, parents just don't understand me, man, kind of thing. I want to generic. do better, but I like where I am. Yeah. It's a good metaphor for Miles in totality where it's like Miles gets injected to the school where he's an outsider, just like he got injected into the comics where he's a nobody. And he's got that awkward feeling of, do I really belong here? Is is this where I'm supposed to be? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, am I really supposed to be here? I just gave a guy a burger, and he was like, Oh yeah, your world got deleted, but we can let you stay here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's something that's always going to amuse me greatly. But in terms of, like, the film itself, I really enjoy the kind of story that Miles went through. And the fact that they really played into the relationship between him and his uncle Aaron. Yeah, I mean... That's what I was just about to mention. Yeah, cause... I mean, it has a profound effect on all of Miles' media from that point on, because, to be honest, like, the Insomniac game probably wouldn't have gone the direction they did with his uh, dad if it wasn't for Into the Spider-Verse. Man, I I feel like the Insomniac yeah. Miles is this weird half-step between comic and Spider-Verse Miles. Yeah, right? Yeah. And it just feels awkward, because they want... Have you seen the meme of, like, uh, Papa, why don't they love me? Don't worry. I'll make them love you. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the defi that. The definitely that's, has that That's vibe. how I felt with Insomniac Miles, and it's like... It, you, can, you can introduce him. It's fine. You, you, you don't have to push this hard. I'm aware he's half Puerto Rican. You don't have to keep referencing it every five minutes. Yeah. He got more breathing room in his own game, thankfully. So, like, I'm hoping that uh, that since the next one is going to be split, you know, we'll, we'll get some even time with him. But, yeah, to, uh, on to back to the movie, though. I was just going to mention before Tony did about the whole them deepening his connection to Uncle Aaron, a.k.a. the Prowler, and now they made that connection more deep. 
and we got actually more into Uncle Aaron himself. Yeah, I think turning him into Miles' Uncle Ben was great because, uh, spoiler for the comics, but I don't think anyone's going to go back and read those uh, if you actually care. Miles didn't have his Uncle Ben moment until pretty much right before he got shoved into the 616, which sucked because he was actually starting to get interesting. Uh, it was the arc where we discover that his mom fa always knew he was Spider-Man, but always covered for him. And then Venom attacks the hospital she works at and eats her. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. that's his Uncle Ben moment, because he had an opportunity to stop Venom, but then, you know, he let her go. He let him go. I, because he wanted to keep his identity secret. I have a hard time blaming him. Venom's a big deal. Yeah. Like, full power, yeah. like, highly competent Peter has a hard time with Venom. Mm -hmm. e even with the, uh, even with the extra electro blasts and stuff. It, you... Like, the point oh, of the mugger was that it was something that it was easily within his power to do. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't blame him at all, but, you know, you can't be Spider-Man without guilt, and that's a heavy right. dose of guilt. And I, I think, I think Aaron and his life just catching up to him works way better, for both, like making him a little more unique and also giving that perspective of like, oh yeah, this life will catch up to you if you don't keep a handle on it. This whole secret identity, the yeah, giving life, him a giving him villains. a path to not fall on is. A much more unique twist on the great power, great responsibility motif. Oh, definitely. And also, I think that Ultimate, like the Ultimate Universe version of Venom, is far more terrifying of a concept than 616 for the most part. The Ultimate version of almost every Spider Man villain is more the more terrifying version of the mm -hmm. 616. Villain. I mean, that's the point of the Ultimate Universe is to be more terrifying and crank it up to 11. Yeah, I mean, look at oh, Norman yeah, Osborn in the Ultimate Universe. He is a literal Hulk goblin that breathes fucking fire. Which is awesome, but terrifying. Yes. Which is why I'm glad they had that yes. little bit of him in Into the Spider-Verse, because we don't get a whole lot of Norman, and Norman's my favorite Spider-Man villain. Oh yeah, same. J just because of the smugness. You, 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 you love a good Peter, smugness. Peter's at his best bantering with Norman. Yeah. And Norman's at his best when he's neurotically obsessed with Spider-Man. Oh yeah, hundred percent. It's it's almost like a Black Manta Aquaman situation, but yeah. with someone oh, yeah. who's actually yeah. competent. Yeah, it's it, but, yeah. I was gonna say, but it's less one-sided, way less one-sided. We all had the same thought. <laughs> oh man, yeah. So I do think that they did a great job with introducing the other Spider people and. Uh, one that got a lot of love in the first one and got even more expansion here. Spider-Gwen. Honestly, she is one of my favorite new Spider characters in the last five years. Her universe is really fucking interesting. I yeah, read her I... series from the jump and it's so fucking cool. Uh, it's an interesting look into if things were to be definitely different and one of the things that i really want to point out is what like one of my favorite anthology series is marvel's what if mm -hmm. we'll say that till the end of time one of my favorite what if stories is what if captain america captain america became president that was during the time that the comic was written and you could and spider gwen is a great what if situation but made its own thing. Not oh, yeah. Amazing. It has... So, it, it's really interesting, uh, because speaking from a comic meta perspective, Spider-Gwen was made to be an easy cosplay cash-in. And then she actually evolved into her own character. And like I said, her world is super interesting. Something that the movie doesn't show, but I hope happens if we get a Spider-Gwen solo movie or something. Uh, Captain Stacy's partner on the force is Lieutenant Frank Castle. No. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, yeah, I haven't really dug into the Spider-Gwen stuff. Spider I, just, Spider I just thought it was weird that Peter died while having the reptile powers. Cause yeah, because of regeneration. Regeneration is a big part of that. Yeah, I, I, guess, I guess she... Maybe his is more Hulk serum than, uh... Than, yeah, Lizard, than that's lizard what, that's Serum. What, that's what I was thinking. That's yeah, there's a, there's a lot of really interesting shit. Like, uh, like I said, uh, Frank Castle is Captain Stacy's partner, and the kingpin of prime in this universe is... Matt Murdock. Oh, really? And he yeah. runs the hand and everything. Yeah. Is he yep. is he still blind? It has he's the oh, he's still, he, he's still blind. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, he got he That's got a neat take. Yeah, he <laughs> got he got blind he got blinded because he he was beat up he was beat up during a gang initiation, and beat up and maimed during a gang initiation, and then he received some training from Stick in order to become you know, the champion to fight against the hand, but then he was like, ah, screw that, I'm taking over the hand. Yeah, it's, it's real, I love what if stories, taking, taking characters and opposite or weird vectors is always super oh, cool. Yeah. Because... Oh yeah, for sure. One of the good things about Spider-Verse, but can be one of the bad things about Spider-Verse, because some authors are more creative than others in their spider variants. I can yeah. totally agree with that one. Mm -hmm. Um, yep, indeed. So, one of the things for sure, like, that I, I want to touch on is just kind of how well the cast was balanced in the first one. You know, like Cap said earlier, you know, we had, like, Noir, Spider-Ham, uh, Penny Parker. Oh, Gwen. I, I love, I love Genki little Penny Parker. She's so fun. I would watch an entire anime of her alone. Just come, g give me that. Oh yeah, just like Spider Gunbuster. Yeah. Hell yeah. That would be amazing. You ever uh, see her uh, comic? Oh yeah. yeah I yeah. love Spider. Look, I love Spider Gellion. Don't get me wrong. Oh, but man. it's and her it's venom. It's more fun. It's more fun for her to be like a a more hot blooded mecha protagonist than the real robot neurotic mecha protagonist. Yeah, the in the comic, they turned her into a Gundam pilot, which doesn't work. When well, all right, it does work because a lot of being a Gundam pilot is that guilt. It's the stress of war. It's the the the, the very, very this, Spider Man. Very, it, it can be very Spider Man, but I don't think they. I think the 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 Penny writers. They lean too far into the Gundam edge. wiki instead yeah. of watching Gundam. Yeah. That's fair. Makes sense to me. Now, to be fair, Gundam is a very intimidating franchise to get into, so, like... Oh, yeah, no, look it. I, I got... The only reason I'm so well-versed in Mecha is because I was introduced to Mecha at the tender age of, like, 8, 10, whenever yeah. I started watching Toonami. Yeah, my... And <laughs> I was allowed to grow into mecca it was it, i i have a i have a very weird kind of similar background my pops is a is a, a big old school anime fan so he watched gundam in like the 70s when he was a kid and like they would they imported tapes in like the 80s and shit and then like when tsunami came on i watched wing having no idea about any of like the political ramifications i was just like oh giant robots beating the shit out of each other that's fucking awesome that robot has a laser scythe that's so fucking cool. And his name is Death Scythe Hell? Oh, that's dope. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, that, right. that's the fun part about getting into Gundam is... Oh, hey, cool robot. Oh, this is bad. I need to release my soul from gravity. Yep. And uh, I think they, they didn't really get... Like, I, I think the Spider-Verse interpretation, the more, like, fun-loving, like, you know, almost... Astro Boy style of like protagonist. It's it's easier to swallow in the limited runtime. Mm -hmm. The the depressed like yeah. Shinji Penny. You need almost like you need like a comic tie-in to fully explain everything. Because one thing I really love about Into the Spider Verse is everybody's little like. Oh man! Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm. I'm... I'm this, and this is my origin story. And you see, like the comics, dude. On the... That was fantastic. Let's do this one last time. And I, yeah. And I, and I gotta say, like, f I, this is for both movies. 
both movies really, as a comic book fan, felt like a comic book brought to life. Like, they embraced all the tropes and didn't run from them, and they leaned into them just enough. Oh, yeah. Death. I think they did it better in the first one than in the second one. Agreed. 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 I can agree to that. Uh, cause, well, well, we'll get into it when we get into the movie, because I think... I think the uh, initial part with making fun of Spot went on just like a little too long, got a little too lampshady. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, we'll yeah we'll get to we'll get to it in the discussion proper. But yeah, so that's our initial thoughts on the movie. So just to let you guys know where our heads at in terms of the franchise. So, uh, without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and kick it off right into the news with Brian. <laughs> Well, you're only doing two new stories this time to hurry up things so we can get to talking about more about Spider-Verse. And the first one is going to be a little lesser interest in this group, probably, but it's still big and we probably need to talk about it. And that is going a little bit into Hollywood beef. So apparently the uh, Rock Vin Diesel feud that has been going on for years now has been squashed did the rock finally realize it's all about family maybe the did he finally hit rock bottom well no but black adam kind of spurred it out so now he's reverting to the things that made him popular like the live action Moana, and now he's doing another hobbs movie but this is gonna be a solo movie Jason Statham, their banter was amazing. Hobbs and Shaw. I was gonna say, Hobbs without awesome. Shaw is like peanut butter without jelly. It's just kind of dry and sticky. Yep. I don't know. Uh, that's all we know, and we know that's gonna take place between ten and eleven. And the assumption is that he's gonna come in for eleven, and he's gonna explain why he hasn't been in the last couple films. Also, isn't Eleven supposed to be a two-parter? Because like the, the the since this is the like the last one for real for real this time, or are they pulling an Attack on Titan? No, this last one was supposed to be the the last one, but then they decided to split it up into two, and then later they said there's too much. We're splitting it into three. Jesus Christ! So they're Attack on Titaning it. They are. Oh, they are. They are. This is the final season, we swear, for real this time. We, we just need one more core. Map is overworked, we just need one more core. One more core. But just one. It's never Don't worry, one. Yeah, we got but it, we promise. I'm moving on to more mixed news. Coming in just today, as of recording, we have a CW update. So, like people thought, Gotham Knights... Was canceled. One and done. Shocked noises. Oh no! Anything but check script. Gotham Knights. Yeah, I saw the pilot. It's kind of shit. It had some promising things here and there, but it lost me from the get go with the fact that it was Bruce Wayne's son. But it was a complete OC who had no clue that he was Batman. What was the kid's name again? It sounded I remember it sounded kind of porn starish. Name it. He it was one of those like obnoxious, like he has a fur he has a last name as a first name. It was something like Turner Hayes or something there, like that. That's something. why it sounded porn starish. There you go. There, oh wow, that's sound, real bad. It did sound porn starish. Yeah. Turner Hayes. There it is. Just and he was blind, movie. unlike any of the other, uh, any of the other, uh... Fun fact, Jason actually was blonde when he first appeared in the comics. He was. I know, but I just meant this I, guy I think it'd be real fun if they started blonde. adding blonde roots on occasion to, uh, <laughs> Todd panels. Oh, that would be amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, that would be hilarious. Oh, yeah, for real. But, but yeah, the show was kind of shit, um... Joker's daughter was one of the main characters, and her father, she actually had good memories about her father or something like that, I don't remember. But anyway, 
Also from the CW, All-American Homecoming was renewed. But the big one, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because our boy, Superman and Lois, was renewed, but with a caveat. All right. What's the caveat? Go on. It's going to be 10 episodes. Well, I mean... Honestly, I guess that gives more budget per episode. Yeah, I was gonna say that that just means they can do more shit and like Superman doesn't have to be on the ground all the time or like, you know, constantly warped. Well, part of it is the fact that uh they're trying to reduce the budget overall. Fair. Superman does eat a lot of budget. Like, oh yeah. No. Th- th- those flying effects on that show do not look CW. Those look HBO. Yes, very much so. I mean, and look, people theorize that we anybody, might lose the cast member for soups. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I mean, that's your flagship Sorry. boy. Besides, uh, you know, Batman. Even though you know most comic fans today would say that Batman is the cash cow for for DC, but it's it's well, Superman. that's because you could do a Batman movie on a way lower budget than a Superman movie. <laughs> that's fair. Big facts. Big facts. Big facts. But but yeah, lower budget overall. But and people suspect that uh, we might be losing one or two cast members. Honestly, as much as I like a lot of the side characters, there are some of them that I think can go. Like the the, the plucky reporter friend, she can go. Uh, the 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 fire chief alcoholic who cheated on Lana, he can go. Like yeah, no, we're, we're, that's fine. Trim the fat. Make it more lean and to the point. But yeah, that's it for news. Thank you, news. All right, so now we're going to jump into our next segment, screen time. <laughs> all right, folks, so this is the segment where we all kind of just go over like the things that we've uh, been checking up on in between podcast episodes. Cap, since you're new here, you got anything you want to recommend to the folks at home? Games, movies, TV shows, books, anything like that? All right, so I just got a new fancy OLED HD TV, and that's beautiful. More importantly, the Final Fantasy 16 demo that just came out, I cleared that today. Fantastic. I saw. Oh, man. It looks great. It plays good. It's snappy. It's, it's, I think the best way I can describe it is the perfect halfway point between like Kingdom Hearts and Devil May Cry. That sounds amazing. You've got a stinger, and you've got special moves, but the special moves are on cooldowns. Mm. So you don't really have, like, a mana system, but it does have, like, a cooldown system. You've got, you've got like, spells, and the spells are tied to an icon, the, the summon, that you have equipped. So primarily you have Phoenix in the in the demo. But then they have something called, like, icon mode, where they gave you a little chunk from slightly later in the story and they gave you and they give you Garuda, Titan and Phoenix. And they all have like a button. So like the Phoenix's like circle button, you get like a special like icon move. For Phoenix, it's like a dash teleport, kind of like Trickster. Okay. Uh, Garuda's got a like a claw grab like Nero's arm. And uh Titan, Titan gives you royal guard. So you get the big ghost hand. Oh and shit! Boat. And oh. if you do a if you do a perfect parry with it, you get to do like a stand rush com- counter combo. Yeah! Oh, that's sick. That's if, sick. if you have a PS5, if you like action games, this is gonna be this is gonna be a big one. This this has game of the year potential. The story's good. The armor looks great. Um. There's, there's the there's the Final Fantasy bits you know, but also it's got that like darker fantasy kind of thing that that they've been going for with like fourteen because it's from the fourteen group. Is it Nomura still? No, it's um, it's who's ever doing fourteen. I forget his name. Ah, okay. The 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 MMO and it's oh it's real good. Nice. I I played through that today. That's oh man, that's been amazing. That and I've been watching. I rewatched Cromarty High recently, and that's still one of the best comedy anime ever. Oh shit! <laughs> Love Cromarty. That, that, that is classic. That's classic. That's not it. All oh, right. oh, actually, I got the, uh, I got the Blu-ray box 
for Gao Gai Gar. Oh, shit. Nice. You, speaking of mech anime, Gao Gai Gar is about as hot-blooded as it gets, and the Blu-ray box, phenomenal quality. The only shame is that, you know, it's like a few episodes of disc. you got to switch it out. Ah, uh, uh, okay. But Nice. Yeah, you know, load it onto your computer, rip all the episodes onto an HD, and then just load it up in a file. And Oh, man. Oh, sweet. Great. Great stuff from uh, who's ever doing that? They also did the uh, the G Gundam Blu-ray box that I got. Oh, oh, I need to get I need to get that G Gundam G Gundam is my shit. Oh man, but uh, other than that, not much. All right, uh, Tony, do you have anything for us? Uh, not at the moment. I've been really busy with some things that I'm working in the background. Okay, cool. Just wanted to let you know for that, Jay. It's going very well. Nice. Good to know. All right, Brian, what about you? I got two things real quick. All right. One is um, I watched the uh, Netflix show because it just came out called Mulligan. I think I told you about it a while back. Um, basically, it's an animated show about um, alien Hunter? invasion. No. Alien invasion hits Earth and destroys most of the population. Uh, and the guy who saves the day is just this, like, guy from New York, kind of on the more stupid side. But everyone's like, hey, you saved us. You did the final blow to the alien mothership. You're now our president. Sounds like America. And Miss Universe, who was helping him, is his first lady. Also sounds like America. It's, it's definitely... Tina Fey is part of the producing team, and you can tell. It's kind of like Dirty Rock meets... Uh, like, OG, original, like... First couple seasons, Family Guy. Okay, like so back good when it was family good. Guy. Yeah, mixed in with some of um, Inside Job, R.I.P. Oh dang, I missed that show. It was great. But it's got a stacked cast. Uh, the lead dude is Elfo from uh, Disenchanted. Oh sweet. The first lady is Chrissy Teigen. But she's playing a more dumb, ditzy, like, celebrity character, so it fits. All right. And we're back. All right. So, to qu give our quick rapid-fire thoughts on the trailers, what did you guys think? <laughs> Brian, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. What the fuck was that? I, I I understand you said you didn't watch the trailer beforehand, but like, yo, if if we could die of cringe, that could have possibly killed us. Dude, you look at the premise: girl dies, comes back from the dead. Thanks to the Grim Reaper, and now works for the Grim Reaper. You would think. It's a tale as old as time, Brian. You yeah, and and remember what I remember exactly what I said as soon as you said that premise. Oh, that sounds like an awesome animated show. Is it an animated show? No. Yep. And also oh, that that one kid who just says the t he just does the title drop. Ah ah! And, he said it. He then, said and it. And then ask for and he like has the audacity to like look around and ask for a high five like you thought of something really clever no, he, feel, he did what i would do ironically unironically yep you don't say the quiet parts out loud kids <sighs> and honestly it just looks like um crappy 2020 whatever beetlejuice no i i i love i love how yeah i love what you said off camera when we were reacting to it it's, oh, we, we have, have Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice at home. Because that's what it is. Like, man. Oh, yeah, indeed. Totally. 
But in terms of good shit, though, The Expendables looks really fun. Oh, yeah. That that series never... It It's a good, it's a nice, even keel. It doesn't, it doesn't spike too high, but it doesn't spike too low. It's... Just Although I I do miss I, I was I was upset that we didn't get Antonio Banderas back because he was really fun in the last one. Uh, he's fun in everything he's in. Oh yeah, I think like, that it, it was it, but it, but like it was like half cocaine, Antonio Banderas. So it was like, you know, it was fun, but it wasn't like you know off the rails. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. I saw a thing online. And I think they said they lost, like, 12 people. Oh, damn. Shit, man. I mean... Megan Fox surprised me. Like, the, that, the, little, the little Mr. and Mrs. Smith action scene her and Shazam had was pretty solid. I was like, oh, okay. Fuck yeah. And also, these films are supposed to be, like, callbacks to, like, the 80s and 90s machismo fucking wildin' shit. Oh, yeah, no. And it, and it, de- it definitely, like... Called back to that with the over the top plot, like with the nukes and all that shit. Yeah, it seems fun. Seems fun. Also, if I'm not mistaken, isn't this meant to be like a series where we like, like an RPG where you drag and drop teams for the different missions? Pretty much. I mean, yeah. If you're supposed to be honoring like the greats of current and old school action movies, yeah, basically what? it's like. It's like an action movie Suicide Squad. So if you were like a big action star, you know, you're you're liable to be called up for the Expendables. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, they look at the cats that they had, like, throughout the course of this franchise. Sly Stallone. Fucking Arnie was in... Yep, he, 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 he was in two of them. He was in two of them. Or three, actually. Good buddy and physicist Dolph Lundgren. Ah, oh, physicist Dolph Lundgren. That was that was great. Uh man. Yeah, no, Expendables is a fun time always. Uh we ended with a we ended with a banger though. Good Omen season two looks awesome. Oh that that looks like fun. That looked like so much fun. Yeah no, I, I was a little skeptical when they said it was gonna be a collection of notes they had, but I mean with the actual writer behind it it's Oh yeah, and I mean, like, Gaiman's done a phenomenal job with TV so far. Like, the, the Sandman Netflix show was pretty great. Yeah, damn near great adaptation of his work on that, on that series. Yep. Yeah, good Indeed. Shit. And I'm also looking forward to his upcoming uh, Dead Boy Society? Dead Boy Detectives? Dead Boy Detectives got... Wait, yeah. Dead Boy Detectives didn't get canned? No, I think it got moved networks oh because i because i remember like that was in like the slate of like hbo max stuff before the merger so i figured that like after the merger happened they do the classic like get rid of the old guys projects kind of thing okay i'm glad that the detectives are still alive pun intended yeah definitely um but yeah uh solid trailers but uh, let's go ahead and jump into the discussion proper. So uh, we'll give you guys a, uh, a quick second to uh, prepare yourselves. We are heading into spoiler territory, so uh, prepare your portal watches. We're going to jump right in. By the way, Jay, mm-hmm. uh, Dead Boy Detectives will be on uh, Netflix. Oh, okay, cool. Nice. So and they can has confirmed to uh, Sandman. Nice. Gaming confirmed that they're in the same universe. Nice, that's great because the original, the, the Dead Boy Detective spinoff is a direct spinoff of Sandman, as it should. Hmm. Oh, that reminds. Yep. Uh, for the next trailers, you guys should do the. Uh... Venture Bros movie trailer that just came out. Wait, they? Oh, really? They're ma- they made a Venture. They're making a Venture Bros movie. What? Yeah, the the trailer came out a, a oh, few yeah. days ago. Yo, I love the Venture Brothers. Oh man, that's hype. That's hype. It's a classic. But anyway, uh, but yeah, so the movie proper. Spoiler alert, y'all! If you have not seen Across the Spider Verse, go watch it. Highly recommend it. Overall, great movie. Go check it out. Uh, but we're gonna jump right into spoilers. <laughs> 
What? Miles Morales dies? What? Oh, oh choice. You know, I, I wasn't expecting it, but man, that that was ballsy. It was ballsy for sure. I wonder how they'll handle the third now. Right? Yeah. I, I guess Gwen's taking over. I, I guess they'll have to bring in Kilometer Immortal. <laughs> but yeah, uh, let's talk. Let's talk about the boy himself, Miles. I I like I like his level up here. He's got earned confidence and definitely like the beginnings of classic hero hubris but he's still scrambling oh yeah mm. and he's oh, yeah. and he still and he still fucks up as we see in like the bodega battle that he has in the in the beginning although i, I love I, the little bodega fight it's i so love fun. the banter that he has with the with Indeed. the guy who owns the bodega he's just like hey Billy, how much I owe you for this beef patty, man? Spider-Man, if you catch him, it's on the house! Oh yeah, definitely, indeed. And we see, like, his little montage, which included a cameo from Armadillo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, like, the stylistic choice for the 1610 to have this, like, phonetic pace and almost, like, MTV music video editing is really good. Yeah, and I... Feels one thing that I can just appreciate is that they're taking the lesser-known 616 fucking Spidey villains mm -hmm. and just passing them into 1610. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely fun. Oh, yeah. Indeed. You can definitely tell that Miles has, and this whole universe has its own style. I mean, the animators have admitted that in the first one and this one, Miles has his own, like, different way of, like, moving, where he moves every two frames, I think. I think the mixed-media approach uh, in this one still is really cool. Like, all the different unique styles work really well. It's a little distracting in some scenes, like, especially in the, like, when they go through the villain cages. Yeah. The, the live-action people look just a little bit too jarring. Yeah. But uh, I, 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 like... can't, I can't be mad at, at the... At the Donnie Glover Prowler. Oh yeah, yeah. I cameo. I, I, I appreciated the Prowler Indeed. cameo because that was obviously you know like we talked about before. That's a big nod to the fact that you know Donald Glover was the direct inspiration for Miles. So you know he just was like, "Sup." Also, he is in uh, the MCU. Yep, Prowler. He is Uncle Aaron in the MCU. Yep. So, but I don't I don't yeah. know if they could do Miles since Tom Peter is white. Miles, yeah, basically. That, that's kind of my that that's my what that's my big issue is that like because they went with a younger Spider-Man for the MCU, they literally just stole Ultimate Spider-Man, but they didn't steal Peter's stuff. They stole Miles' stuff. Ned is just Gank or Gonky, however you're supposed yeah. to pronounce his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it was weird, man. Yeah. Which I did like the fact that uh, since Ned was basically Gank, that this version of Gank was a little bit different. I love that. Yeah, he's just so, he's just so like, done with Miles. He's just like, whatever. Oh, your bad guy got away. It's like, oh, thanks, man. Really helpful. Well, speaking of bad guy, I really appreciate the use of Spot, especially with the story they're telling, because... Uh... Uh, yeah, with, with dimensions his, his, and stuff. His dimensional shenanigans. Yeah. The yeah. last time the spot was really well used in a Spider-Man thing was in the 90s Spider-Man cartoon. When they used the spot to actually do the the original first ever Spider-Verse where Madam Web gathered together all the Spider-People, including like Six-Armed Spider-Man, the Silver Iron Man armor Spider-Man, the fucking... Uh, Scarlet Spider, Spider-Man, the Doc Ock Arms, Spider-Man. That, that was yeah. the first ever Spider-Verse before it even happened in the comics. Oh man, yeah. that, old, that old '90s cartoon show. Mm -hmm. I could do a, I could do a, a three-hour podcast on that thing alone. Jeez. Oh yeah, anyway. yeah, man. I think I heard Spot also made an appearance in the Superior Foes of Spider-Man. Yeah, he was a he was a bit character in Superior Foes, but Superior Foes was it was more like a comedy about like the Spider-Man's D-list villains. Yeah, sucking and at also, life. He in even in his comic book appearances. Uh after like his first appearance, they pretty much made him into a joke. Yeah. And uh like his first appearance, he was 
fucking competent. And then, Man, oh, yeah. Yeah, and then, and then Daredevil just stopped taking him seriously because you know he can Daredevil cheats because you know he can't really teleport and sneak up on Daredevil when Daredevil can still hear you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Big facts. Yeah. But somehow. No, speaking of not taking him seriously. Yeah. That's I, why, oh yeah. That's why, I was. That's I was annoyed. Problem. I was annoyed with how. Because, like, I get it that it was supposed to be his driving force that they don't take him seriously. I mean, still, I'm not a, I'm not a monster of the week. But... I'm not a villain of the week anymore was a real good line. But I think they, I think they belabored the point. Yeah, like, if, if they had Miles take him seriously earlier, but then everybody else didn't take him seriously, then I think it would have earned it more. They let that gag drag on for a bit too long. Like yeah, it was great in the I, bodega I didn't fight. That. It, even when I was, it, it was away. it was the whole thing with Miles. Like is like the uh, the apology videos gag, the uh, mm -hmm. the the product endorsement gag. It was like I get it. Which, by the way, I, I have a serious question about the product endorsement gag, and mm -hmm. this is just. Like, I know this is a nitpick, but this is just me as a content creator who works in social media and knows how sponsorships work because that's how I make my money. How the fuck is he able to get sponsorships? They can't just write a check to Spider-Man. That's a plot point in a bunch of comics is when Peter yeah. takes a Spider-Man check to the bank and they just laugh him out of the bank. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. like, how and, does uh, that work? <laughs> I can remember the new Avengers where, um... Luke ran it, and they were like, uh, we want to pay you, but, uh... Like, unless he gets cat, Unless he got paid for those sponsorships with cash under the table, like, there's... I don't know how that works. But you're not gonna pay somebody with cash under the table on, like, uh... Like, like those were, like... I think those were, like, YouTube ads yeah, or something? Yeah, he had corporate sponsors. Yeah. yeah! He was in mid-rolls and shit! That's corporate-backed! You, you, you don't... You don't get under-the-table cash from a corporate ad! No... Yeah, for I was, real. I was so confused. It 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 took me out of it a little bit because I was just like, that doesn't make any sense. That 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 I, that gave me very much like a this is these that's how the kids make money now. This is what the kids do, right? They they post on the YouTubes what? and the TikToks. It it was also a callback to uh, Peter A. Parker, who was uh, big into merchandising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. into the yeah, Spider Verse. Yeah, and he did, oh, which by the way, fun fact. Chris Pine actually recorded that Christmas album, and you can find it on iTunes. Oh, that's great. <laughs> All right. Nice. Because uh, definitely in stuff like Dungeons and Dragons, you can see that he has a good voice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a, he's a very talented man. So I think that's kind of what they were going for, because, like, like Peter A. made a bunch of money in advertising, so obviously Miles is going to kind of get some of that as, like, a reference to him, so they don't just ignore his existence like they mm -hmm. kind of did and all right, all right so here's here's one of my big nitpicks in the movie is is aunt may moves out of her house yep but we know from into the spider-verse that under her shed it's the spider is cave. the spider cave yeah but she didn't yeah. give the house to miles yeah i was very confused yeah. that, that was another thing that like again just like nerd brain i was like but you're gonna leave the whole fortress unprotected there's a whole cave down there. Y'all didn't move the cave. Is is the cave included? Cause like Yo, that, 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 that's that, gonna that, jack the red up to like that, astronomical I, 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 levels. I'm saying this, the, is, the, dude, this is New York, man. Can, can, be alone. can you imagine the power bill? Like those poor those poor people who bought that house, it's like, wait, why are we paying like forty grand in power? Why is there a small nuclear reactor in the backyard? Um, honey, do you, do you know why our Wi-Fi bill is so high? It's like we're running a supercomputer in here or something. Just, yeah, I'm, I'm, like, I get they wanted to write and watch it. That's so the birth of a new Spider-Man. Uh, mm -hmm. So they can focus on Miles' family, and the stuff with Miles' family is great. Oh yeah, don't get me wrong. The the big the big house block party, and I mean, nothing I've ever encountered in my life. I mean, I live in a small New England town. I'm very white. Yeah, but I could feel that it's very, it's very accurate i've been to several of those and it, it it matches the vibe very well and uh you know 
I like this kind of stuff with Miles. I like that they show, like, hold on. I like that they show his heritage without, like, shoving it down your throat, you know? Like, yeah, because that was yeah. a big problem with the, the Miles Morales video game, is he might as well have been draped in a Puerto Rican flag. And, I mean, you know, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that, if that's what you want to go for, but, like, they just kept mentioning it every five minutes, and this one, it's just more naturally it's through the piece. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's through the characters, yeah. through, like, the actual interactions with the characters that it feels more organic. Right. And they also Even do like... a really funny callback where um, Miles gets to be in Spanish, and then you cut over to Gwen, and Gwen's got to be in English. Well, yeah, yeah, and then also, like, not even just his also, interactions with his friends. Also, I hope they brought back the whole uh, Gwanda thing as well. That that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and also him trying to speak Spanish with Miguel. That was also Whoa. that was also a nice touch because like mm -hmm. he did because people because his last name is O'Hare, so like people forget that he's also I mean I get again his first name is Miguel but like people do forget that he's a lot of times people forget he's uh, Hispanic. Yeah. Half, 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 uh, half Mexican, half Irish. Yeah, yeah. interesting combination. Rarely ever Vampire. seen. Vampire. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they made him a lot darker than he was in the comics. And, oh yeah, uh, but yeah. like there, I feel like there's a, there's definitely a reason for that, and I like how they did it because if you actually look at on paper Miguel's powers, they are scary as fuck. Oh yeah, no, like um, yeah, that's mm -hmm. one of the things I love about Miguel. So, I think this is the problem with Across. Across, across the yeah. It's Across. Is, mm -hmm. um... Miguel is what I think a lot of people wanted Miles to be. Mm -hmm. Because Miguel is very much not Peter. He's got different powers. He's got the drug addiction angle. He's from the future. Um, his powers work very different. It's not just, you know, Peter's powers, but he has, like, the claws. Yeah. He, he climbs different. His webbing's different. He's got his. He can't in. climb on walls. He has to use the claws. Yeah, that's what yep. I mean. But then when you look at Miles, he's just Peter with black people lightning. Can I just talk about that for a second, just as a just as a comic book nerd, Go just off. kind of meta Go complaint? Off. Go off, Why is it? I never understood the fascination with giving. Every black superhero electric based powers, and then we get Miles, and you know, it's like, oh, he's a Spider Man, finally, somebody without electricity. Oh, he has electricity. All right, okay, all right, y'all couldn't resist, could you? Couldn't do it. And uh, have you seen clips from uh, the upcoming uh, Spider Man 2 with him? Yep, yeah. He he actually has an electricity Shaurukin. I saw him do the Hadoken. Yeah, and yeah. here here's something that's really yeah. wild to me, because just by my interpretation of that added ability, because of uh, a spider's paralyzing venom in some instances, I think that's what they were trying to go for mm. with that. Yeah. Play. But they supercharged it to the mega cliche thing that Jay pointed out. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they turned it from like yeah. a paralyzing touch to black people lightning. Yep. And I I don't care how bad that sounds like coming out of my mouth because that's what it is. It, no, like, it, like, he gets like, he turns into, he turns into mini, uh, he turns into mini electro. Like, some, I saw something, he gets like a, he makes a lightning sword of all things. Like that super cringe part in CW Flash. Oh no. Oh god. The Speed no. Force Swords? Yeah, Miles gets like a, like a shit. Venom lightning sword. Oh, it's super lame. I hate it. I hate it so much. Oh, Damn. God. Damn. I, I can understand if it was just like like Taser. Right. But they they keep expanding. That's Miles' unique gimmick is, is the lightning, but it's... Oh, it's... Let's... Let's not also forget another unique ability that's connected to Miles that Peter doesn't have. The cloaking ability. Oh, I was I was gonna say something else, but uh yeah, the cloaking ability, yeah. <laughs> oh god. Oh, Sorry. 
could help so. Oh god. <laughs> oh that was oh man. I I almost I almost said it. I almost said it. Glad I didn't. Me too, me too. Yeah, no, the, see the cloak ability's cool. That's something they could really play around with, so they could make him a bit more like give it give him kind of like a stealth action scene, because he's he's smaller, he's younger than Peter, so he doesn't have like the he doesn't have the raw might that Peter has, so he's gotta be a little more tactical. He's gotta, you know he's got the paralyzing touch. And he's got the cloaking so he can get in and get behind somebody and do it. Which is a cool unique more spec ops. Set for a new Spider Man. Right. That's awesome. But they don't they don't lean into it. They they keep focusing on like him being Peter and also having lightning powers. Yeah. yeah. Which Okay. I guess. Well, the one thing I, one... I really love just getting from is uh Actually, something that's a theme of this movie is uh, is the two cakes. Mm -hmm. They bring it up in the uh, in the in the college interview thing. Um, the Miles goes through the whole adventure through town carrying two cakes to the dad's party, and uh, it turns into like uh, I'm not proud. <laughs> yep. Oh god. Yeah. Oh god, that's awkward. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. But then, you know, his whole is like, come back just with the one cake. And it's, it's, it's not too in your face, but it's a nice, you know, you, you've got to make hard choices. The whole double life angle of Spider-Man that so often comes up in, uh, in stuff. But go on. Oh, I was just going to mention, you guys talked about the electricity. It, at least so far and across. He's just using it to absorb electricity and do the taser, which I really liked the evolution of that. Especially no, with the fact across. that it's just bad in other Miles materials. Yeah, yeah. that's especially with the Hobie, like mentoring him on it. Hobie, Hobie is a very interesting character. Yeah, I, I'm so... I'm glad he didn't have lightning because then I would have definitely had to say something. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Um, no, his main yeah that, that punk rock anarchy aesthetic. I I I appreciate that he's very old school, like Sex Pistols punk. Yep. Big facts. Big facts. Cause yeah, and and even into like an almost like I I'm glad he's just as much of a parody as every other Spider Man. Cause yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, that's the, oh, that's yeah, the thing indeed. I like about the the first one is that none of the characters in the like supporting Spider cast were played straight entirely. Like, I mean, Noir was just Nick Cage, Nick Cage it the fuck up, and it was great. I I missed like that. Nick Cage even himself said that in an interview where he just played it straight, and then they were like, "Can you be more?" Emphatic with it, and he's like, "Oh, you want me to go to the full Nick Cage?" Okay. He was, look, his presence was sorely missed. Is all I'm saying. Oh yeah, no, him, him, oh, and yeah. uh, oh. John Mulaney, John Mulaney, Mulaney John Mulaney, yeah, yep. Jo him, him, and John Mulaney, because the movie was, I'm not gonna say it was too serious, but it it needed like Hobie is a bad comic relief, but Hobie dipping between like. Serious counter revolutionary and parody of punk. Yep. Kind of left him feeling muddled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Yeah. Thing. Um. Go ahead, Brian. Also, okay, I was just going to people... say real quick. That... My bad. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say real quick this is a little behind the scenes, like, sauce about everything. But, uh,. But yeah, I actually saw a thing about animation, and you know how animating, you animate each frame one by one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, for Miles, they like kept it every other frame. That and then sense. for Hobie, they went every third frame. Oh, that explains the little jank. Between... Okay, that yeah, that's cool. Um, Hobie was probably a big problem because, like, I liked how he had like the the paper, the little like, the, the, the paper sticker on the wall it. kind of thing. Yep. Yeah, I thought that yeah, was cool. I, uh, I really enjoyed that aesthetic. Also, apologies, YouTube people, for my like constant screen switches. 
I didn't realize that, like, a, a thing with push to talk is that, like, you know, pressing the keys also fucks with the screen on Discord sometimes. So I had to assign to a proper key in order for it to not fuck with the screen. So I apologize for all the screen switches for the YouTube people. Audio people, you have no, you know, worries with this, but, like, I'm just apologizing Ooh. to the YouTube audience. Sorry, YouTube people. But yeah. Well, welcome to the end of the Spider Verse experience, where it's a lot of weird, janky camera switches. <laughs> oh yeah, there. <laughs> you know that is, that is actually fairly accurate. Yep. Yep. Um, on brand. So let's talk. Let's talk about Gwen real quick. Since we're talking, since we're talking about Spider People, because she was arguably the secondary protagonist of the movie. I I'm gonna say oh, yeah, uh, Gwen Gwen Miguel and uh, Spider Woman's fight with. Uh, Victorian Vulture was probably my favorite part of the movie. That was amazing. Also, oh, yes. I love that Vulture. Indeed. He's just, he was so hammy. It was fantastic. See, yeah. Victorian Vulture is what I expect out of like a, a more jokey mm -hmm. Spider Man movie where he's. Yeah. I, I don't, I didn't really appreciate. I, I I liked the little bit of lampshading at the very start, but I think they went a little too far with it again. Mm -hmm. Um, But boy, was. Like, like, Gwen made her jokes about him, but he was a threat. Oh, yeah. He was oh, yeah. Da Vinci, Indeed. Da Vinci Vulture, whatever you want to call him. He is scary. And, and, he those, cool. and those paper effects were cool as fuck. Well, oh, it, yeah. It also Hell yeah. a bit of Renaissance Italian at people is fucking chef's kiss on that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love the little, like, uh, yeah. and they had, like, the calligraphy subtitles for him. Yeah, that was really dope. And you yeah. get to, and you we get do to see get how to see scary his. Miguel is when Miguel's not playing for fun. Oh man, that oh, was dope. Man. Yeah. And like, we also do get to see uh, his uh, Spider Woman later on in the chase. Yep. Yeah. And and Spider and Spider Woman was really cool with, with like her motorcycle dynamic entry entrance was fucking dope. Yeah, and her little uh, fingertip based shooters instead of the wrist based shooter. Yep. I think that was yep. awesome. And then to pull him, to smack him in the face with the motorcycle. Yeah, no, like, the, the as, fight as scene, a, the fight scene As a big Tokusatsu awesome. fan, I appreciate a good motorcycle violence scene. Oh, oh hell, hell yeah. yeah. You, gotta, you got to have that perfect amount of motorcycle to face ratio. Listen, wheel to yes. the, front wheel to the face is always going to be a classic. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, speaking about Vulture, though, real quick side note. That scene and the explanation for that scene actually fixes a plot hole in Morbius. Huh? Does it? Yeah, that's how um Michael That's Keaton? how uh Michael Keaton got to the Morbius universe was because the Spider-Verse sent villains to other universes. No, it was because I thought that was the Doctor Strange thing, Magic. Yeah, they even mentioned it in Across. Yeah, because the the reason the reason Vulture is in uh in Gwen's timeline is because of uh, uh Far From Home, I think, is what it was supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, it's all connected. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. It it distributed vultures where there weren't supposed to be vultures. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my fucking god! And even with uh, Miles saying, "Who's Doctor Strange?" I I I, oh, I, lo yeah. I love I love that uh, I love that line from Gwen, just like. I don't know who this Doctor Strange guy is, but he probably shouldn't be practicing medicine. Yeah, he probably shouldn't, but eh, you know that the yeah. the, MC, yeah. the MCU Doctor Strange is definitely not the comics Doctor Strange. Ah, uh, you know it, it, it's far it's, far more competent and way scarier. Medicine oh, is uh yeah. medicine is way out of his hands now. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, Dun -dun. Thank you, thank you. I'll be here all week. Uh, um, let's see. So there was that. There was the the first fight. The um, the weird the weird. All right. So the weird tension. Cause, I, so okay. I I'm very confused on I'm very confused on the age scale on Gwen. Can we talk about that, please? Because yeah. No. Because like. All right. So Hobie looks like he's in his like late twenties, early thirties. Mm -hmm. Just about yeah. Yeah, he looks like he, he's look like he's like between twenty. He's like twenty eight to thirty two. He's like twenty eight to thirty two. Like when is like 
a, ye- a couple years older than Miles. Gwen has to be yeah. bare minimum. Gwen is twenty. No, she's because she's still in high well, school. I think. I would say. I think she's um, like eighteen, nineteen. Okay. In uh, 18, into uh, we we see her sneak into Miles' high school. Okay, because like th- that confused me because comics Gwen is fresh out of college. Right. Is this Gwen's younger than Comics Gwen and also doesn't have a symbiote suit? Mm-hmm. Which... Oh, yeah. Major disappointment, because the, the Ghost Spider Gwen... Looks thing. sick as hell. Oh, man. Could have definitely... But I think it would have been a little bit too complicated to introduce a symbiote and all that stuff, so I, yeah. don't, I don't blame them for not doing it, but boy, do I love Maybe Gwen. a spinoff. Maybe. Maybe in the spinoff. Um, but but she has actual spider powers here, so that's yep, yep, yep. better than her not having spider powers and just relying on a symbiote. Mm-hmm. But, alright, so yeah. so she's kind of flirting with Miles, but is also really kind of just wanting him as a friend because he doesn't I have don't... any friends. What is this supposed to be, dude? And I... then she's also, yeah. like, making eyes at, Ho- at Hody and, like, Okay, because, like, okay, so they imply, they heavily, heavily imply that Hobie and Gwen are together. They basically have moved in with each other. Like, they even mentioned, like, her toothbrush is there. The toothbrush in the apartment is the universal sign of, you are my girlfriend. Or we're fucking on a regular basis. They fuck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 All right, so, all right. So, so huh. Miles gets cucked in his own movie, and like, cause they they show him doing all those weird simp drawings of her, and it's like, oh, Miles, that's a bad that look, was, man. That was super cr- Look, I, I I was just like, bro, no, no, I thought that was a meme. I, I that, that oh no, cause like there was a like there was a little like fan comic before the movie even came out, like before the first trailer was announced. There was like a little fan comic of like him drawing a bunch of these like simpy Gwen drawings and like Gwen pops up out of nowhere and it's, it's it's a similar scene but like it was a meme and like she but like in the in the meme comic she was kind of creeped out she was rightfully creeped out because it was like creepy stalker drawings and I why was that not addressed also because like bro that was, a, that was a little too far man you it always, was she has an offhand line, but it was, they don't really go into f- full detail with that. You only knew also, her. You only knew her for like three days, bro. I got the feeling that bad. the thing with the uh, the thing with Hobie was like a I can't be who, with who I want to be with, so settling. But, but also, but I'm bro. confused. Just just because he's the other Black Spider Man, is that the implication? I'm really confused about that. <laughs> Because, like, uh, like, what is the, like, because the age get, like, the way they present Gwen maturity-wise, like, I don't, yeah. it doesn't feel like she's a high schooler. She feels like a college kid. Yeah, yeah, no, she feels like, like, in, in the first movie, she was at least closer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it felt like a senior hitting on a freshman in yeah. the first movie. Yeah. But now he's like a sophomore. A sophomore. And she's like a, a sophomore like a, in college. Yeah. And then yeah. she's going after the older guy in in Hobie and yep. it, I don't know. It, it's it's, it's kind of it's um, really that, that it's really thing messy. Is weird. And like so again, just jumping into the whole inside baseball thing. In the comics, they did the Spider Gwen Miles thing as a joke, and like they kissed. But then Gwen was like, "Wait, how old did you say?" Oh my! Oh my God! I'm going to jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of harking back to the whole. Uh... It, it yeah, it was ultimate black, black hat. hat. Yeah, it's like the ultimate black hat joke. Cause that was one yeah. of my that was one of my favorite moments in uh also the Ultimate Spider-Man cart- uh, comic was like cause it's like fifteen it's like sixteen year old Peter and Black Cat in the Ultimate Universe is this milf like crime fighter thief she's like normal Black Cat age so she's like in her like mid twenties or whatever she's doing the normal Black Cat thing 
wanting to fuck Spider-Man. They make out, and she's like, well, you know, I took off my mask. I'll, you know, I'll show you mine if you show me yours kind of thing. He's like, well, okay. He takes off his mask, and she literally throws up. She throws up. Like The, the worst she can is, say is no. Yep. Yeah. And it's just like, <laughs> Oh, my God, okay. I made out with a child. I almost had sex with a child. Oh, no. Yeah, no, and, um, it, the, it, like, the it, romance it, is cute, but, like, I it would feels have, bad. I would have liked it more if it was, like, one of those things where he has the crush on her, but he realizes that, like, he was more in love with the idea of her and having somebody that understood him. But it feels like they're yeah. trying to build it as a genuine romance, which just But then they also kind of right. have that thing with, uh, what's her name? Spider Bite? The, the oh, AI... Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, the... the right. Oh, yeah, the um, Avatar Spider-Man? Yep. Yeah, that was... I don't know. I felt like that was a real lame... That that, that felt very pandery. Uh, I felt... But, uh... So, I don't, I don't want to be that guy, but, man, did they... Did they pull out every not Peter Parker Spider Man? Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, I do want to add one last Spider thing about Indian, this whole, uh... like Spider Man Bollywood was really cool. I will say. I, yes. I like Spider Man Bollywood. But, you know, Spider Man Bollywood was a joke on Miles not having it together. Yep. Yep. And but, uh, uh, and hearkening back to Peter A. Parker, who was like very casually Spider Man. Also, shout out to Depender from Deadpool. Moving up from side character on Deadpool yep. to a Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, technically, because um, I think he's supposed to be in the new one. So that's now like four MCU actors who are also in Cross. Yep. Not surprising. Easier to keep the talent pool uh, where it is. But uh, back to the whole uh, thing about the relationships and messy. I just want to add that that in a little bit of thing of self promo, I think this whole situation is even more messy than our last episode. Exo Kitty. Oh yeah, but and Exo Kitty was like a literal like teen drama with a like a with you know your traditional love triangle and shit and like classic like K drama harem tropes. Like, so I think this is the real issue: is that mm -hmm. Into the Spider Verse is trying to tell like three stories, yeah, and only one really works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 th I, I think that was the, I think that was the issue, because like what, what makes the first one so great is because it focused on the, the one lesson of the leap of faith, and like just learning to trust yourself. And well, it stuck through that all throughout. But this, they were trying to do too many things at one time. The other thing is, like, they, like, I think, of, like, the, the, the through line between this one and that one is, um, Miles isn't Spider-Man. Yeah. And in the last one, they handled a lot more subtle. Um, mm -hmm. instead of Miguel going full low-tier god on... <laughs> That Miles, was crazy. Yeah. Give it, give it him the "you will never be a Spider-Man" speech. Like, mm -hmm. it's so on the nose, and yeah. it's, and of, and of course it's Miguel doing it, the only person who could do it without ri people rioting, and it's. Well, I, I, mean, I have it's, a. It's it's, it's, it's it was just a little too on the nose. It was just a little like, you are never supposed to be Spider-Man. I I have a I have a I have a theory of uh, why he's so uh, hatred towards Miles. All right, like even more than just the whole anomaly thing. It's also the fact that he's an anomaly, but his wor world and Earth forty two are completely intact. Earth forty two is fucked without a Spider Man. But it's still intact. And yeah. Earth 1610 is intact. So even though he's an anomaly, it didn't ruin his universe. Mm -hmm. So this is, this Miguel is, is angry. So yeah. Miguel is angry about the fact that 
that him trying to live a happy life with a family messed up, but this kid just existing didn't, so... So, yeah, that, that's another problem I have, is the inconsistency with this canon world destruction rule. It was yeah. very we'll see. loose. All right, if I may. Here's okay, the thing, ahead. here's the thing. Oh, go ahead, Brian. I was just going to say real quick, here's the thing that we've got to keep in mind with all of this, is this is a part one of a story, so they could answer this in part two. And I I'll, feel like they will. All right, I'll get to that in another minute. That was my biggest problem with this movie, is this is this is two hours and 12 minutes long, and it's only half a movie. Yeah, I was... You could go fuck yourself. I was, I was really confused about that, because, like, my big issue with this is, like, it was a pacing issue, like, because, like, they... Two hours and no pacing! They, 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 they gave us, like, the, the, like, the full, like, Matt Reeves Batman runtime with a cliffhanger. Like, what the... Go fuck off, dude! Like, okay, so... Yes, it's a trilogy. Yes, there's going to be a third movie. You can, if if you can't write a story beginning to end in two minutes, you have failed as a screenwriter. I don't mm. care how armchair that makes me sound. You can you, you no, can write I, a conclusion I with agree. a cliffhanger. It, it doesn't have to be a hard to be continued. Yeah, like, next week on that, Spider-Man. That look, I I get that they were trying to homage comic books or whatever, right? Like, cause it, it, this is like a comic book brought to life, like we you know mentioned before. But here's the thing: this isn't a comic book, bro. We we're not gonna we're not gonna wait a month and get to know the next issue. People are gonna forget. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know if I could sit through another two hours just to get a cliffhanger. Yeah, uh, just to refresh cool. myself. Like, also, thing is, I have my own issues with the whole the canon must be put together. All oh, oh. have to do this, that, and the other thing. They all must suffer the same trials and tribulations to keep the universes in order. I think when stupid. when Miguel's the most different of all the Spider People, yeah, that was that that was that was definitely a hot calling yeah. the kettle black situation. Okay, Miguel's just mad he's not the only Latino Spider Man anymore. I'm, I see. I was going to say that. I was going to say that because, like, uh, you know, that whole "I'm not a Spider Man" speech, and I could tell this was the direction Cap was going. I read I read that in a completely different context because, you know, I was around reading the comics when Miles first came out. I read the letters pages. Those were though that speech was straight out of a letters page of this is a mistake making this character. He's not the real Spider Man. Why'd you kill Peter, you heartless dickhead? You know? Uh, oh, no, you're 100% you're right, and I could feel it. This mm -hmm. was a, this was a middle finger to people who don't like Miles. Yeah, and like, and... It, yeah. It's blatant, it, and I don't like it, it, it and it makes me not like Miles. The reason I didn't, the reason I didn't like it is because it felt very mean-spirited, and I, I hate whenever... They have to put down characters in order to try to elevate others instead of elevating other characters on their own merit. Because Miles is cool enough to be able to rise above. We saw that in the first movie. He proved it. So the fact that you did this to him and, like, it just, it just felt so mean. I don't know how else to say it, but mean. It, yeah, also, also, I... One thing, I love Miguel O'Hara. He is one of my favorite spider characters. In any, in the entire multiverse, 2099 is one of my personal favorite alternate Earths in the Marvel Universe. Doom 2099 is so cool, by the way. And it's so awesome. To do one of my favorite, like, iterations of any, of, of any character... 
to make him just the epitome of another character, say, you cannot be this if you don't stick to these certain rules. You always have to lose something when you're a Spider-Man. When that's not necessarily the case, Mikael. Tell me, how did you get your start as Spider-Man? You basically were big-brained enough to copy the same genetic sequence as Peter Parker. Yeah, look, but man. I, you got I, by motherfucking corporations that turned you into Spider-Man. Like, Do not start with me, Miguel. Like, look, man. I I'm a, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, I when I when I saw that scene, like the first thing that popped in my head because I'm a comics fan, and I was there when I I was there when Miles first came out. I was reading. I read those letters pages. That's what that shit looked like. And, you know, look, I am a comic fan. Any, every comic fan out there has had their toxic moments where they've talked shit to the comic creators because they disagree with decisions. Hell, Brian Michael Bendis has me blocked on Twitter. And, Ma- and, 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 and Marvel, and he refused, and he refused, uh, he refused all my requests for interviews. Mar- Marvel put me on. Marvel put me on a blacklist in terms of Bendis, so uh, I, I can't. I can't get any Bendis interviews because he doesn't like me because I disagree with his uh, pandering writing sense because he's trying to just appeal to, you know, minorities without actually making legitimate characters. But that's another argument for another time. Uh, but anyways, th- th- my point. My point being is that like. It felt so... It felt like they were trying to be smart and deconstructive. But, like, it just felt like a direct attack at the people who, you know, were wrong about their opinions on Miles. But it also was too harsh, in a way. Like, there was, there's a better way to phrase it. It's... Like I, like I said, it's the... Papa, why don't they love me? They will. Yeah. Like, in, like, like, in, in like, 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 the people like, who didn't like Miles, I don't blame them. I won't even say they're wrong. Because Bendis introduced a character to replace Peter and didn't do anything to make him different enough to warrant the replacement. Because mm-hmm. if you look at other characters who replace other characters, especially ones that took over the role, like uh, Wally West. Dick Grayson uh, Batman. Dick Grayson Batman. Uh, Terry Batman. Um, Spider-Man 2099, um, uh, John Stewart Green Lantern, Guy Gardner Green Lantern, Kyle Green Lantern. All of these characters are not just palette swaps. They are their own individual people with unique interests. Yeah. Skills, and they, like, they were built up characters. into the role. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, Wally was Kid Flash forever. Until, like, what is it, like, Final Crisis, yep. I think it was? No, it was Crisis on Infinite was... Earths. Crisis on Infinite Earths. Infinite Earths, Infinite Earths, yeah. Crisis on Infinite Earths. Yep. Uh, there have been so many Crisis. Yep. Uh, and yeah. then he They're currently he going the through role, one, I think. And part of Wally's character was being scared about replacing Barry Allen, and it was, you could feel it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and, like, his uh, earned his earned arc was, like, him realizing, no... I am the Flash, and you know what? I can be better than Barry, and y- and he was better than Barry until oh, they. Yeah. Just... Wally's Wally's the best Flash. He is. Um, but you know, like th- the way they introduced Miles, they rushed it too fast. They didn't give Miles enough time to like Develop flesh out his dead, Develop his own character. They, flesh did, out they his own didn't character. give Miles his own supporting cast because, like, the th- the thing that made Spider Man, and in particular Ultimate Spider Man such an amazing series is that his supporting cast was amazing. Like, you know, his version of MJ was awesome. Like, so much so that the entire Ultimate Spider-Man, like, cast was what they ported over for the Insomniac games, essentially. Like... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, like, Miles feels like a supporting character for Peter. Like, he he hasn't... He hasn't got... He hasn't done his sidekick time. For yeah. lack of a better term, yeah, I and I don't want to say like you have to do this to replace a character because like no, John not. Stewart replaced Hal after Hal slipped in the tub. Yep, but yeah. John Stewart had a character had a had a strong enough character that that with one conversation over coffee at a bar, 
you could feel the difference between Hal Jordan and also and John he had his own like well defined morals and ideals. Miles right. didn't have anything besides I'm a you know I'm a generic good kid who is a minority and wants to you know do good in the world. I'm a double minority. But there isn't like a there's no great power or great responsibility. Like I said, until his mom until he loses his mom in the comics, like he just kind of does it because you know New York needs a Spider-Man more also, so than like he feels any responsibility. And right. let's take this com this uh, comparison forward. Let's look at what Miguel came how like I described how Miguel came to be. Yeah, he was a cocky, arrogant scientist that figured out how to sequence the genetic code of Spider-Man mm -hmm. and was going to use it to market it. Essentially, if I remember things correctly. Yeah, no, because basically in the 2099 universe, superheroes are the new religion. Mm -hmm. Like, and literally Omega people Thor worship Christian. Thor as, like, a like ba are back to worshiping Thor as an actual god. And they see the heroic, the, the heroes of the heroic age as, like, deific figures. And mm -hmm. so Miguel wanted to bring Spider-Man back. Um, and it was also connected to Alchemax, which is the mega corp that was in... Right, this bugs me the most. Mm -hmm. They have Miguel. They have Alchemax. Yes. Yep. Never the twain shall meet in Spider Verse. Yeah, that was so. That was so weird. That was really weird to me. And all. Also, I'm not gonna lie. I like. I, look, I don't. I don't. I don't want to be that fan. I don't want to be that guy. But I'm about to be that guy. They did this plot line so much better in Spider Man: Edge of Time. Totally underrated gem of a video game. It is the sequel to Shattered Dimensions that nobody played but me, and it was great. I did. I didn't play it, but I should have. It's an aw it's an awesome game, uh, and the, 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 there's it? a really cool twist in it too, in terms for the bad guy and stuff. I can I can I can mention it off camera. Like, like wasn't yeah. one of the uh, wasn't one of the. Um... Spider-Man voiced by NPH. Oh, that was in uh, Shattered Dimensions. I'm, Edge of Time. I thought it was also in. No, no. Uh, NP NPH NPH wasn't the main. NPH wasn't the main Spider-Man. Uh, NPH wasn't the main Spider-Man. They had yeah. uh, they had nineties cartoon Spider-Man as the as the main Spider-Man. Yeah. No, actually, here's what the voice cast they did for Shattered Dimensions. Uh, 90s Spider-Man voice Noir. Oh, it was Noir. Okay. Yeah, uh, NP8 voiced uh, main universe Spider-Man. Okay, so it was okay. So yes, I, like uh, I I know NP8 was was one of them, but I didn't know which one. Uh, the voice actor for Peter in uh, Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends voiced Miguel, which oh that's oh. dope. Oh, that is cool. And yeah. Said, I think they did Spectacular Spider-Man voiced Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah, um, I think that's what the case was, which. In Shattered Dimensions, that was great to oh, yeah. just explore that, but the point, I told you, Jay, when you and I talked privately, mm -hmm. that they did Miguel dirty in this movie. I just felt oh, it in my bones. Effortless. You know, that's 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 one of my biggest complaints. Is, uh, Miguel, Miguel and Miles should have been buddies. Yeah, I, I so... I, after sitting on it for some time, I don't understand why they didn't bond. Like, and I'm not talking about the, like, we're both Latino Spider-Man thing. I'm talking about a, we're both Peter Parker replacements kind of thing. Like, you know, I'm from a time where Peter Parker existed a hundred something years ago. And I have, like, a hundred years worth of heroic deeds to live up to. So I get it, kid. Yeah, like, but they... They turned Miguel into this, like, uber-focused, for lack of a better term, Spider-Man nerd. Also, yeah, like, I, that's the other take I didn't like about Miguel, like, again, after thinking about it more, is that, like, he is, he represents the Spider-Man fan. Yeah, you can no, really like, tell. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the other big issue is um, this is this is an attack on the 
overly dedicated Spider-Man fans and the lazy Spider-Man writers. Yeah. And like, in a blatant and boring way, because there's no mm -hmm. nuance. There's no nuance to Spider-Man to Spider Miguel's death cult. Of yeah, we all have to have. Ben die. We all have like, to have Captain Stacy die. As a Spider-Man all... fan, like, mm. you know that these events are sacred. But, like, also, you can't be married to this shit. I've, exactly. I, I've gotten into so many arguments at comic shops about ne Spider-Man in particular needing change and needing to be different. And there are so many fucking... 40, 50 year old Spider Man fans who will not fucking drop, uh, will not let it go because he, he was a teenager when they were teenagers, so he, they, they got it, they got to be the same. Well, guess what, dude? You're 40. Spider Man needs to move on with his life. Let him be a the teacher. Better, the better Spider Man stories are when he's like a 20 something researcher or a high school teacher. I, I loved when he was a science teacher at his old high school. That was the best oh. run. Like, or just shooting it, shoot, like shooting it in the dark because we know for a fact Peter is intelligent. He has his own science-based corporation for a short amount of time. Yeah, he was. I, he was Tony Stark for like a year and then yeah. got went bankrupt. It was, but it was it was something. Right. Yeah, it was like something. he could do anything. He's he could. He's highly intelligent. He's highly resourceful. He's like I like it. I like it when he's kind of like a bit more backyard, mm -hmm. and Fair. you know, like he's he's slapping these spider gadgets together out of like he, stuff he dug out of Norman Osborn's trash can. He works. <laughs> he works best as friendly neighborhood, right? And mm -hmm. I think this is a problem that Spider Verse has, and that the comics kind of has in general. So I can't entirely blame Spider Verse for this, but. Because Spider-Man is such a big hero marketing-wise, they try to push him out of his element. And, yeah. like, that's why, compared to Far From Home, like, Far From Home was a good movie because that was contained to Peter having personal problems, right? The reason, mm -hmm. the reason um, far, far From Home, the one where they went to Europe, sucked so much was because... It felt too big for Spider-Man. Yeah, like, the fun yeah. thing about Spider-Man is that he can... His, his his like, friendly neighborhood is punching below his pay grade. Yeah. He has, so... a, he has enough power to be able to, de like, do damage to the Hulk if he, want, if he really wanted to. But he right. doesn't. Right. Yeah. And he's... Like, the, I mean, the problem with movies is, um, in, like, 616... Mm -hmm. He tangles with the uh, he tangles with the X Men because he's a mutant, but not that kind of mutant. Yep. He's uh he's a science hero, so he hangs out with the Fantastic Four. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's a street level hero, so he's hanging out with. He Daredevil. encounters Daredevil yeah. and Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Yep. But in a movie, you can't that connection isn't there because. And... Mm -hmm. That's so, kind of my thing with Spider-Man. So you in can't general. just have so you can't just have Wolverine blow into town and be like, "Hey, bub, Dinosaur Island's got problems, and oh I, you're God. the only person who I can ask for help." That was my favorite. That was my that favorite hilarious. mission in the Ultimate Spider-Man game. Oh, that was on the original Xbox, where Wolverine God. just shows up out of nowhere and just like, "Oh, this is this is the best game ever." Uh, yeah. Hey. Comic and, you though. know, Peter can't just, like, you know, hey, Rit hey, Reed, I I need you to help me with this science problem I'm having. Mm -hmm. And also, I, I... Reed, Reed loves Peter because he finally has someone to talk science at that doesn't fall asleep. Right. True. So, yeah. so Spider-Man is this great, like, adhesive for the Marvel world. Universe, as yeah. A, as yeah. 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 He, he's the adhesive for the Marvel Universe because he he can fit into any team and he's got good chemistry with so many characters. But it, 
he has the worst chemistry with himself. Yeah, I think, and yes. that, and that's the problem I think we we run into here is that like, Spider Man is good bouncing off of other people. Spider Man bouncing off of Spider Man is just kind of annoying. Yeah, right. Because and... like, Wolverine and Spider Man is probably my favorite combination. Hundred percent gold right there. Because but... like, sp- like mm. Wolverine has this whole like aversion to puns and he like he just dies inside every time spider-man makes a quip and i love it but mm-hmm. spider-man's like outside of namor is the only person he can talk to yep yeah and also one of the things that i just really enjoy about uh just peter in general one of his best friends is johnny fucking storm yeah yep him and jo- him and johnny are bros they were they were roommates in college yeah. I think I think that's really the problem with Miles is they don't let Miles have a social circle like yeah. Peter has. And and that was mm-hmm. my and and again that was my that was my issue in the comics and they and Cause like, that was also even a problem in, in this the movie. movie yeah. The problem is that like Genki is only like an acquaintance. Yeah. Also all he has is his family and you know we can talk about this now. His family is great. I love all the stuff with Rio in particular. Um, and of course, his, and and his dad, his his dad's awesome, but like he needs more than just his family. It is it feels weird that a fifteen year old is spending so much time with their parents. I didn't want shit to do with my parents when I was fifteen. Yeah, like, yeah, and I I he, think that's the point though. The fancy school. He doesn't run into any other. Is 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 sixteen ten just? Devoid of other Marvel characters? Are you telling? Are you well, telling me that there are no other? There's no like Flash Thompson type of character at his school who's like a Spider-Man fanboy that he could like at least like talk to about Spider-Man shit and pretend yeah, like, hey, I, yeah, I like Spider-Man too. Anybody? Like, I hear you, but I think I think that was also part of the whole thing about the movie is the fact that. That he is still relatively new to being Spider-Man, and that he thought but he's that he's not relatively found... new to being Miles Morales. Exactly. Yeah. He, he doesn't have any old friends from Brooklyn that he plays basketball he... with. He doesn't have any new friends in the fancy school that he does science with. Yeah. Like, like or... he thought that he found a group of friends but with the no Inta crew, and then they left, and so he knew he's trying like to juggle. Days. Like, I get it. And then, you know, like, he's devoted himself to this, uh, to the Collider physics stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned in the college interview. Yeah. Like, guy, just go to a singles event. Yeah, like, dude. Well, also, we don't see that much of him, so he could have more friends, just we don't know it. And we don't see too much of Miles. We see a ton of Spider-Man, but we don't see a ton of Miles. Yeah. Good chunk of the movie, Miles isn't on his Earth, so we couldn't see the people that are on his Earth. Yeah. Also, we and, it, and then we just okay. As someone who loves just multiversal stuff mm-hmm. in comics, okay, I will admit to this. But even I have my limits when it comes to like what to do with multiversal stories. I like the idea of going to a a universe where the hero meets a version of themselves that is this dark reflection. But, but, I think that they shot their load a little too late in terms of showing how Earth-42 ended up, you know? Yeah. Going to Earth forty two should have been where this movie ended. Yeah. Like Yes. Mm-hmm. Like he he has oh, also speaking of Earth forty two, that whole speech Miles gives to Earth forty two, his mom. Mm-hmm. I beat all the other Spider Men. I'm the best of them. You didn't though. Oh You ran for your life, bro. You got lucky. I and like okay, this 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 was a this was another this was another thing. Right, like they they uh, they don't explain this to people 
in the movie, so people who are just watching the movie won't understand this. But, like, if you are a Spider-Man nerd, you get it. The reason Miles was able to evade all these people with spider senses is because spider people don't show up on spider people's radar if they are good people inherently, right? No, it's it's just because Venom doesn't show, trigger spider sense because he yep. is he, a spider. Oh yeah, he is a spider. Yeah. 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 So so, so it's, it's not it's not about being a good person. It's about having spider sense. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so spider so, sense cancels each other out. Yeah. So, so yeah. So he and, and and because so because he was being so unpredictable and like off the cuff, that's how he was able to get out of there. Which again was clever. I'm not gonna take that away from him. He was smart. He outsmarted them, but I don't know about be beating them. He didn't beat them. them (laughs) Yeah. Also, like, like I said, Miles was lucky. He was fighting uh, comedy Ben Riley. Mm -hmm. Miles was lucky. Kane wasn't there. Miles was lucky that 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 version of Web Slinger doesn't have a real gun, like comics web slinger has yep but also uh point out here that miles is a kid so of course he's gonna get a little uppity and self-righteous yeah no it's fine i just i just i just didn't like the line because it it felt like uh it was in character i just i just didn't like i just didn't like the line in general yeah and i well apparently you guys didn't like the movie at all whoa 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 hold up Hold up. Dude, you have you guys have collectively spent the last 30 minutes just shitting on this movie. Well, because the, you know, the the movie is great, but you can't we can't we can't just we can't ignore the problems that we had with it. Exactly. We we have... well, All right, so uh, like I I can talk for 10 minutes about what I don't what I like, but I can not but it's it's just easier to talk about what you don't like. Just the things that we I I know just the feel of the room. I got the feeling like you guys didn't like the movie. No, I dude, I love the movie. I enjoyed this movie. The, the, the movie the, the movie was great. It, 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 it has it had some of the great it had some of the greatest action. I I I think I think it handles like the 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 stuff with Spot becoming an eldritch monster Hell was yeah. some of the most visually interesting things I've seen in an animated movie this year. I think, I, and I, 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 yeah. I think storytelling wise, it really captures the feel of reading a comic book and the just dynamic pace when the pace is actually going. It really feels like a comic book story brought to life, and it brings together all the good of it. But here's the thing, Brian. Comics also have a lot of bad, and the like, bad, the, it also brings know, the bad just, of comics to the forefront as well. I just also don't see as much of the bad as you guys see, apparently, because because I know the, the whole to-be-continued thing is a, little frustra- is a little frustrating, but let me finish my thought. Uh, because, yes, and they did end it on a cliffhanger like that, but... We also did get a resolution of sorts with the whole Gwen Stacy stuff at the end and her going to go save Miles. And that was like a bit of a resolution for the end of the movie, which is like resolution what you get Gwen's with. Story, which mm-hmm. was one of yes, the three plot so, lines that was running through this movie. And sometimes you get that when you have trilogies like the, the great trilogies, like the Two Towers and the original Star Wars trilogy, they ended on some cliffhangers. But, but here's the but here's the thing, though, Brian. The original Lord of the Rings movie was a movie about Frodo, and you know the the resolution centered around Frodo. And yeah. the original Star Wars movie was a movie about Luke, and it and the you know and the resolution ended on Luke. The issue I have with uh, with the second movie in ter- uh, like in comparison to the first one the first one is all about miles through and through but features the spider characters as helping parts to his story this the second movie is a miles and gwen movie and it like leans a little too it doesn't give me enough miles man that's my problem i love miles and when we do see miles it's fantastic 
but there's just not enough of him. And also, I will say, he... my favorite part of the movie, and I apologize, Prowler Miles is just cooler than Spider Miles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, he, well, as I said, I think it's a really good And cool. also, yeah. uh, also, a little bit of what if here. Uh, if you see when Miguel is talking about how the spider was in the other dimension, before it got shifted to Miles' dimension, it was about to bite that Miles. Yep. Corn Rose Miles. Was it? I'd have to go rewatch it. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's um in a sketch. It's like sketch done. And the reason why you recognize it is just because of the cornrows. Ah. Mm-hmm. And, but, and also, Brian, one of the major things that I tried to vocalize that was just a nitpick for me was because I am a fan of Miguel O'Hara, and I just didn't like how the film interpreted him, and it just didn't feel right to me. And al- and also, like, the, 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 re- the reason I'm so... The reason it just seems like I don't like it more is because the things they bring to light are things I've been frustrated with in Spider-Man comics for 20 years. So I've had a lot of energy to be pissed off about this. It's not Spider-Verse's fault that they bring up problems that I've had with Spider-Verse. Uh, well, with Spider-Man for yeah. almost my entire life. It's, uh, um, yeah, it's... I hear you, but you can understand my um, misunderstanding. No, I get oh, it. Like, we, no, no, we were, we, we were, we were definitely, we were definitely negative. But like, I, 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 I and audience, I want to make it perfectly clear. We all enjoyed the movie. Like, mm-hmm. I, we wouldn't be covering it if I, you the, know, if we hated it. These are the nerdiest nitpicks that can exist for the movie. Like, general audiences, pro- oh, love it. It's oh yeah, that's yeah. general audiences. Like, mm-hmm. the only way, the only way you're gonna have the problems we're having with it. Is if you're like a 20 year Spider Man fan, like most of us are. Yeah, like, it's, like these are these these are these are only problems. Listen, if you're too invested. Th- th- and... th- this char- this character is so close to the chest, like literally, like he is my favorite superhero of all time. So I am very 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 particular when it comes to Spider Man. Like I am probably the harshest I'll ever be is with two characters in particular. Peter Parker and Dick Grayson. You fuck up either of those characters, oh, yeah. I'm going to be upset. I mean, for you yo if this were, was uh if this was if this was into the Hulk verse, I wouldn't be as nitpicky. Oh yeah, cuz I yeah, yeah cuz I don't really give oh, a shit about the Hulk. I hear you, but you're it's... talking about Dick Grayson. Just f- for those who get it, like back in the day with Jay, with the whole fuck Batman controversy. Oh, man. Uh, oh, mm. Season one of mm. Titans was so hard to get through, man. I'm surprised you actually got through it. I, I just did. didn't even watch it. I did. It was but, tough, but I got it, through it. So here's And it got thing. good. Eventually. And here's another thing. Jay brought that Spider-Man is his favorite, uh, one of his favorite superheroes. I would be just as upset. If there was an adaptation of Animal Man out there in the ether, and they didn't get Buddy Baker right, I would be mad. I would be rioting. Look, this is no, no. I I get you, man. I'm I'm telling you, (laughs) I get you. I'm not as familiar with Miguel, but I do know him through like the video game and all that. So I I do get it. But the other the other problem was like so in in the Into the Viper in in the. In the Into the Spider-Verse stinger, we see Miguel starting to form this team. Mm-hmm. And yep. it seems more... It seems like they changed Miguel from Into the Spider-Verse into Across the Spider-Verse. Yeah, because he seems more... He seems more he's Batman-y. Chasing down, he's chasing down problems that got caused by the Collider exploding. Yep. He's chasing down these anomalies. And then they thrust on this whole sacred timeline bullshit to it, and it just—I don't know. It's yeah, like if they had stuck to the anomalies of the collider and didn't tack on the whole must follow the canon thing, I probably would have been more okay with it. 
because the, again, the must follow the canon thing, and this goes back to being a major Spider Man nerd. It just it pissed me off because again, it reminded me so much of these just frustrating conversations and arguments you have in comic shops of no Spider Man has to be like this. It has organic what webbing was a mistake. Was necessary. Well, like, oh my god. To go on that train of thought, just something to bring up. Uh, in uh, both of the in the first two Spider-Man uh, uh, live action uh, movie series, mm -hmm. I believe both of them. At, well, no, no, sorry, back. Wind that back. In the first one, the Tobey Maguire one, mm -hmm. we uh, see Wednesday, see, but it's not really go too much deep into her. Well, mm -hmm. now we know that she died in that universe because they said specifically in this in across the spider verse that spider gwen is the only gwen who doesn't die within the old Merc multiverse really yeah. she, 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 Just is, she, is she really the only one Ooh, shaggy oh nice yeah yeah they said they said it's a canon event interesting so, here? so can I just, I just, I just have a real problem with the canon events, because we see him f messing with, uh, with, uh, what they call him, Indian Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, Spider-Man India. The Spider-Man yeah. India. They, he, like Miles stops that cop from dying. Yeah. And his yeah. universe immediately starts to destabilize. Yep. And mm -hmm. we get like Doctor Spider-Man and all these other random jobber Spider-Mans. Setting up some weird, like, dimensional stability devices. And it's just like... But... So is Miguel right? Is is Miles wrong? Also... Well, see, see, also, the thing is with that scene, though, is Spot was just there, who fucked shit up majorly with their collider. Also true. Also, side note... Uh, the other reason I'm a little upset with the with the canon thing in particular is because being a being a longtime comic nerd, I can already feel how they're gonna how they're gonna address it and how they're gonna deal with it. Miles is going to introduce the concept of the retcon, and it's if gonna. If they didn't use this inside baseball breaking kayfabe terminology, I wouldn't be as mad. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like it's. It it just felt too inside. It felt too like I hate. I hear you, and also the fact that we don't get any touch of like Madame Web or the Weaver or any hint to any they, of yeah, those. Yeah, they don't. Bring up, they don't bring up like I don't. I, I'll. I will. I will say this on record. I hate the concept of the spider totem. Yep. Um. It's it's just unnecessary. It's an unnecessary complication. Yeah, Spider Spider-Man Spider -Man doesn't need to be mystical. He was fine. It's just a science experiment gone wrong. Right. This this right here proves my points. Oh yeah, no, you're no, you're uh, that 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 issue. Fantastic, but like, and and you know, it's like oh, we all have to follow these same beats, and I I just couldn't take it seriously when they showed uh, Raimi. Uncle Ben dying in the alley or in his car or whatever it was. Yeah. It's, yeah. And then they had to that, show amazing that, uh, that, Captain that scene Stacey. has been memed to death, so I couldn't take it seriously. <laughs> oh, good yeah. God. And then they added that by Kill adding the all, Captain Peter. Stacey. Also, like, it, it just reminded me of, like, the, like, you know, the constant jokes that, you know, we have with, like, superhero movies of, oh, man, it's a new Batman franchise. We're going to go watch the Waynes get shot again. Like, you know, like, yeah. when you literally yeah. show that on screen, I'm just like, all right, I get it. I get it. You're, you're talking to me. I'm in this picture, and I don't like it. The pearls spill across the street again. Uh. Also... If we go by that, who's the captain who died in the MCU? Mm, captain uh, Iron Man. <laughs> right? Captain Stark? Like... I guess. Like, it's, 
this whole idea falls apart. Yeah, the that's what I'm saying. Like the second you pull up, you it. start pulling on the threads. It just all pulls apart. Like that, and that's my issue. If this thing didn't revolve around the canon, all this canon bullshit, and it was just like Miles, like the story that they had on paper in the beginning of Miles not feeling like he belongs and wanting to find a group of people where he belongs and finding these spider people only to have them reject him because he's an anomaly and he literally doesn't belong, but not because he's some kind of cannon breaker. It's because he just doesn't fit in because right. that, that would have been so much more interesting because it applies more to the human element. And that's where I thought they were going. Maybe and it would then... have been better if they didn't have all of the alternate Spider-Mans and it was like a council of Peters and that really made him feel yep. like an outsider. Yep. Because it's like, oh, hey, Peter. Hey, Peter. Hey, Peter. Peter! Pete! Buddy! And it's just, it's just How's like, my Peter boys? It's just like, oh, there's a black Peter? It's like, I'm Miles. Oh. Oh. Uh. Oh, like Miguel. <laughs> yep. Uh. And and you could have Miguel and, and Miles bond over not being Peter and the awkwardness of not being Peter. But yeah, like that that's my issue. Like the thing, the thing that it, the thing that upsets me is that there that there there was a potential for something really cool in here that they overcomplicated. And they went for uh they went for a low-hanging like inside baseball thing that they didn't have to. Yeah. Like my, I, I wish this movie was worse so I could be genuinely mad. Oh yeah, like I'm not, I'm not like, like the, the, the again. These are all just nerd nitpick problems. Like when you see my final score, you'll see that honestly they didn't even affect it that much. But I'm just really upset about it because I'm passionate about this character. Yep. It's just big nerd anger. Yeah. <laughs> So I on, hear you, but you also note, set up this uh, mm -hmm. you set up this podcast to not talk about negative stuff as much. Yeah, but also I have to break that rule because it's Spider Man, and I I can't I can't not. Oh, I, I totally get you, but but yeah, um, is that like all right? So all right, great things. The animation for India's like. Spider yo yo thing that was so phenomenal. Fucking cool. that is so, so many cool yeah. camera shots with the spider yo yo thing. I, I don't know if yeah. that is the proper name. Someone in the YouTube comments, please tell me what that's actually called so yeah. I know. Yeah, the, I, I, I also would like to know. Um, it kind of reminds me of like a, a Kodama, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, but it's not quite like I think yeah, there's like an Indian similar, name for that thing. Quite. But, um, uh, everything with, like, like Spot's bastardization arc, figuring out how his powers yeah. work, the uh, the animation mm -hmm. on everything Spot-related. When Spot turns into the anti-spiral. Oh, that was so cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was genuinely horrifying. Man. Yeah. And, and like, uh, you know, like I mentioned before, Gwen's story was so cool. I honestly wish it was its own movie. Because like I, I would watch a whole movie, of movie that. that led into my like 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 Miles running away to forty two and feeling ignored and outcast would have been a great thing if this was Gwen's movie and Miles happened to tag along. Because Gwen stuff was really strong. Like I think her I, story, I love Captain but Stacey. her story he was, her, he her, such yeah, a... her story was really well handled and she got some great resolutions. Um, Definitely and. I will say for like, sure. one of my favorite things in this movie is the scenes between her and Captain Stacy. Oh well, yeah, like did I say former the, the, Captain the, Stacy? Yeah, the uh like the hug with the web scene. Oh my god, that was so sweet. It was great, I loved uh, it. Yeah. It was. Perfect. And also another like thing that I loved about this movie was like all the freaking callbacks. Yep. Like, things that you thought were not consequential in the original. Yep. Like, the whole donut. 
Yeah, bagel. Bagel. Oh, Sorry, bagel. But, oh. uh, but yeah, also, uh, also um, like the, the gag also, I don't know if this... about mm. like correcting things was uh, was really funny. Like, and I like how it came back in uh, in the indie in the India world because you know Miles had that whole joke in the bodega fight of. I don't, I don't understand why people say the M in ATM. I don't understand why people say machine with ATM. The M stands for machine. And then, you know, Spider-Man India is like, why are you saying chai tea? You know chai means tea, right? You're just saying tea tea. Yeah. Well, it, it, also, it also goes into the whole two yeah. cakes redundancy thing. Yeah, yeah. Which is... Oh, yeah. See, this movie has these good subtle moments, and then these, like, really weird ham-handed moments. Yeah, and it, it's sure. uneven in that way, and I think that 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 was the issue that we uh, that we had here. Because there, there's these really good subtle moments. Everything with uh, everything with Spider-Man India was was really nice. Everything with Miles' um, family was great. Like, everything, yeah, everything with Miles' family. Um, his his mom and his dad having this like actual like. Miles' dad wants to be tough on him, but Miles' mom realizes that they can't like force him to do and, these things and i and i love that like it's a it felt like a real genuine moment of like parents realizing oh shit you know like we gotta let our kid fuck up like cause... oh the uh I, I really love the scene of uh of miles's dad repeating spider miles's advice to back to his wife yep yeah that was great also uh this was a little small moment, but uh, I did like his Miles quick little back and forth with uh, Sun Spider, um, the the one on the wheelchair, and uh, she, if I remember correctly, she talked about how she was a fan of Miles, which kind of makes sense now when you find out the whole truth about Miles, because so the problem both are is that like six sixteen ten has been quarantined. How is she a fan of Miles? Every everybody in the Spider Verse knows about Miles. Oh, okay. Gwen, Gwen, Jess, a lot yeah, of people yeah, knew yeah. about Miles. Yeah, it's, 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 it's because it's because it's because the six it's so sixteen ten was the epicenter of the whole collider incident that jump started the whole Spider Verse anomaly thing. Okay, but yeah. I think part of her being a fan is the fact that. She's defying expectations with the fact that she's got a disability and yet she's still Spider Woman, and he's defying expectations because the whole anomaly thing. Oh yeah, no, that I, that was cool. Like, it, it felt it felt a little weird. Like, all right, so you have all the powers of Spider Man, but the Spider stuff didn't. I I, I was confused about her power. Not it's a mess. Uh, didn't unmess up whatever's going on that makes you need a wheelchair and crutches. That seems a little like, man, you got the you got the weak Spider-Man. So, like, so I'm not gonna lie. As somebody in a wheelchair uh, who uses crutches, if I got bitten by a radioactive spider and I was still on crutches, I would be visibly upset. I would be like, all right, this is the worst superhero deal. Ever. You're telling me I still gotta be in a wheelchair? What? Because, like, uh, in, the, in the Sam Raimi, the spider bite fixed his eyes. He doesn't have to wear glasses anymore. It, yep. uh, it gave him a six-pack. <laughs> oh, man. That's true. Big change. It, 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 started, it, started it started that whole trope. I love that when the, I love when the, you know, the Flash, like, made a nod to that in the first season. The, li wait, Lightning gave me abs? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, perfect. Uh, it it uh, works just fine. But yeah, like I don't know, man. The, yeah, the, the, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good stuff in here. Like, like the animation with the wheelchair and crutches was really nice. Like mm -hmm. how she snapped between yep. them in like a style switch was cool. But oh yeah, mm -hmm. it, it felt weird. Awesome. Like the, the 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 spider powers didn't strengthen your bones. I I hear you, but. I did also like like the little small things here and there, like the fact that we got to see like Metro Boom Spider Man. I think I think um, maybe that was the plushy Spider Man, but it felt I think Funko Pop Spider Man was there in the background. Funko Pop Spider Man, yeah. Uh, we, uh, Lego Spider Man actually had a big yeah. scene. Oh, I yeah, love Lego Spider Man. Which um, 
By the way, for those that don't know, that Lego Spider-Man scene was animated by a 14-year-old. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Damn, yeah, good um, work. They, good job on you, kid. they saw him. He did a fan, a fan Lego trailer for the original first trailer that came out. And the director saw it and said, that's really good, and got him to to do their uh, Lego scene. Major props. Oh, that's awesome. I could do that yeah. at 14. Man, the, that, that kid needs to put that on his CV. Right? Is uh, he is he SAG now? He's got it. Is that enough for a SAG card? That has to be, right? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a contribution to a major motion picture. Oh, Damn. shit. Good for you. Also, also the whole fact of... Uh, of a what's his face coming back for Lego J Jonah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. Well, he 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 is J Jonah Jameson. Look, you you yes. can, you can't. That, that's that's why like you know, uh, like he came back for the MCU because you can't have like he's so ubiquitous with Jonah now that every voice actor in Spider Man animated TV shows has to do a J K Simmons impression if they can't just get J K Simmons. Facts. No uh, ifs and ands about it. Oh man, but yeah, no, it, it like the movie. The movie overall is fantastic. Also, we didn't talk about it, but the soundtrack is fire. Oh my goodness! Yeah, the entire kind soundtrack of, is really good. I was kind of alluding to that with the whole Metro booming Spider Man, which yeah. was it was really cool to see him in there, especially since he like did the whole soundtrack. Yeah, Metro Boomin uh, curated the whole soundtrack. Which, by the way, yep. Hummingbird is the one that, 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 like, that's the new jam. That is going to be the new Sunflower. Like, I, I can already feel it. Like, that, that, song, that song is dope. Not, it's not What's Up Danger, but nah. it's good. Uh, what, one of my favorites is uh, Am I Dreaming. That's a good one. I, I, li- I, like, the, uh, I like the song uh, Spider on the soundtrack as well. That's a, that's a good one. It's a, ni- it's a nice hype track. Uh, but yeah, soundtrack is just really well done. Um, I, I, I just like, I like the improvements to Miles as a character. Uh, like I said, the, the big issue, the only real issue I have, like, with Miles is that we just didn't get enough time with him, in my opinion. And I yeah. think they're definitely going to fix that in the second movie. So, th- these complaints are more than likely going to be moot, but right. I still got a complaint. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, and uh, I, I'm really, I will I'm say, really excited. I'm really excited for Prowler. Oh yeah, and Miles. Like, like I, like yeah, my, yeah. I, I cannot wait for more. Like, I, I left, I left the theater. Like, I need this second one now. I, I was mad because oh, okay, we're gonna introduce the coolest part of this movie in the last five minutes, then slap you with to be continued. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Too. I, I hear you, but also. uh if you're talking about Napix here, one that I just thought of, which kind of got me, was uh, how they kept commenting about how Miles had, like, the red pits, and they asked him if he was bleeding. Yeah, I, I don't get where that joke was coming from. Me either. I mean, I think his, I think his, I think his, uh, his first movie suit was better than the second movie suit. Yeah, same. I think the oh, second yeah. movie suit is probably way easier to animate, so <laughs> I don't blame them for changing it. Yeah. But I mean, I liked I liked Miles like with the jacket and the spray painted suit and yeah. the fucking shoes. That, yeah, well, that was the costume that I used in the in the game because it's just the best one. It 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 has flavor. It has personality. Like the, the like the, the second one doesn't have as much personality as the, as the first suit. Keep in mind. Oh yeah. Ben, ben fucking Riley had a hoodie on his ass. Oh, Listen, can we talk about how good costumes. the Ben Riley model was? Just oh for a yeah, second? that was so cool. Oh yeah, like oh man, the 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 nineties shading lines and, on it and the expression. It, it looked it looked right out of it looked it looked like the uh, the Todd McFarlane statue come to life. Oh yeah, and like dude, the the I'm telling you, if if the, if there isn't a McFar if there isn't a McFarlane toys action figure of that Ben Riley, I'm going to be so surprised. I mean, there probably is. More likely, yeah. Uh, but man, or ooh, if you're uh, if you're really into toys, uh, you gotta look up these amazing Yamaguchi versions. Oh man, these are some wild versions. Nice. Uh, they it's a it's a Japanese toy hyper hyper articulate. They're crazy. 
Nice. It's to make it sound Damn. Cool, uh it's kinda like what most SH figure arts levels of articulation. Oh wow. Oh it's 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 beyond SH figure beyond? arts. Ooh. Oh hell yeah. But yeah. Yeah, like um yeah, just just look up the amazing Yamaguchi Spider Man. It's wild. All right, will do. But yeah, so and, uh, final so thoughts, out, guys. To help you out, Cap, uh, Jap uh, Tellway Spider Man was in the front board scene when they did the whole major Spider Man meme. He was. A oh. You yep. can tell by the bangle on his hand that is reminiscent. Yeah, he. Has, uh, yeah, you can see. Yeah, his, his morpher is directly in the shot. Mm-hmm. Oh, speaking of Morpher, the jacket they gave to Penny is, that's just, like, straight up Simone's jacket. Oh, yeah. yeah. It is just straight up Simone's jacket. Yeah, and I'll, I don't know if y'all have seen the memes, but the fact that Penny looks so dour there, yeah. they were like, she's been through some shit. Yep. Evangelion. I mean... If you if you re look uh, like Cap said, if you if you read the Penny comics, it is literally Spider Gallion. Uh, in the room yeah. Penny. In they the also room Penny. they also changed uh, Spider's look to become accurate instead of the uh, friendly little ball mech. Yeah. From uh, it, 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 well, went, it went from Bay Max to an ape. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, also to be fair, the original one did get destroyed at the end of Into. Yeah. True. Oh yeah, it did, didn't it? Yeah, that is true. Uh, but yeah, final thoughts? Uh, let's go ahead and start with Cap. And then score, obviously. I, I'm i glad I went and saw this movie in theaters. Because it's got a presentation that really benefits the big theater oh, yeah. experience. Um, it's like the visuals, again, amazing. The soundtrack, fantastic. The action is top-notch. Um, but it's, it's all the little nitpicks that just hold it back from being like, like the first movie was such a good, complete experience that this one being that weird middle child, I think is going to be the mark on its existence in this trilogy. And I'm sorry, you're the war turtle of Spider-Man. Oh dang! That is a no! 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 no you no. didn't have to. Uh, no, he. I. I. I, th I think. I think it's more like it's. Uh, uh, he, he's. He's the. It's the septile of Spider-Man. No! 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 Because no, the no, previous no. one is much cooler. Yeah, you're. Well, no, right? So like, Squirtle's really good. Yeah. War Turtle's weird, and Blastoise is cool. That, I've yeah, got a feeling. True. I've got a feeling beyond. I think it's gonna be called. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Beyond, beyond the Spider Verse is gonna be that Blastoise thing. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah. okay. Oh yeah, it's yeah, gonna yeah, blow yeah. us all away. Definitely. But, uh, I, I, like, look, this movie. Eight point five. It's real good. Real good. A lot of these little nitpicks that just make me mad. They make me nerd mad, and yep. I don't like being nerd mad. I just want to like. I yep. just want to like Spider Man. Yeah. I want to like Miles. Let me like Miles. Like. Please. So, like, I, let me. I'm jump jumping in here. Like, I I love this movie. I I really do. Uh, for all for all the same reasons, you know, you know, Cap mentioned. But man, man, I felt personally attacked by a lot of those little things that were like those direct jabs at comic nerds, and oh, it got to me. It got under my skin. And it did. It did. I was. I was steaming. I was steaming for uh, for a couple of days, waiting to waiting for this podcast so I could yep. just vent it all out and be done with it. Oh yeah, you know, I, I I got out of my system, so it's done now. But like, I, I I think the like a good comparison to keep the analogies going. I think this is gonna be the Guardians two of this trilogy, because like if you look at the Guardians movies, right, Ooh. the first Guardians movie is lightning in a bottle. Oh my god, what the fuck was that? How was that so good? It has no right to be this good. Then Guardians 2 was just like, eh, it was good, but like, I don't really see the importance to this right now. But then when you see Guardians 3, you're like, 
Oh, shit! That makes so much... It ties all together. This is perfect. Like, this movie is going to be very much appreciated in hindsight. More so than in the moment, I feel. I mean, it's getting rave reviews, and justifiably so, but it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's only in these really nerdy circles. Yeah, yeah, is no, nerd, yeah nerd mad. Nerd mad, yeah. for sure. Yeah, just being nerd mad. And, and, the, and, the, and the nerd mad is the reason I will... I have to give it an 8. And just for scale reference, I gave the first Spider-Verse a 10. So, yeah. Alright, so, Brian... Are you talking without pressing the button, Brian? Yes, I am. <laughs> but hey, it took me like, what? Two and a half, three hours for me to do it for the first time? It's okay, Brian. Magic of editing. But anyways. I did... Not see as many flaws as you did, but when you pointed out some of them, I will concede to them but i still really enjoyed it uh into is no doubt like one of my favorite films of all time yep so there might be a little bit of bias in it but also i don't have as big of a comic tie as the rest of you like, I still know comics, and I've read some Spider-Man comics, and Spider-Man is my favorite. But I don't have as much nerd rage as y'all do about this movie. But still, it does have some flaws. And like you said, Jay, it'll be better when it's going in as a whole for a trilogy. So, we're breaking tradition here, but between you and me, but not overall, ironically, with the guest. I'm going to give it a flat nine. Interesting. Interesting. Right, hold on. Uh, okay. As for me, I agree with what everyone has said here on panel. I Most of my criticisms is connected to just being nerd mad about a lot of things as I've already established but I'm with uh, I'm with Jay on this one this is definitely an 8 I just in my for my in good conscience to myself I cannot add like a 0.5 even though I like a lot of things, I like the various different designs that they did for the multiversal spider people. Mm -hmm. I think it was great, but there's just some things that nagged at me to my very nerdy core that I could just not give that extra point five. You know? Yeah, like yeah. the 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 issue. I I want to emphasize the reason I for in particular have such a such a fucking nerd rage reaction to this is because, uh, just to give you guys a frame of reference, uh, you know, Spider-Man has been my favorite superhero my entire life. And, uh, you know, when I first started getting into comics was in elementary school. You know what series first started when I was in elementary school? Ultimate Spider-Man. Came out in 2002. I... I, ne I didn't get a chance to, like, collect Spider-Man from the beginning because I wasn't alive in the 60s. But I have every single, single issue of Ultimate Spider-Man all the way up until the whole universe ended. I love this series. I love Ultimate Peter. I love Miles despite the complaints I had from him in the beginning because eventually he became his own character. And you see so much of that in this movie, and that's some of the stuff that makes it great. And my biggest hope is that the next movie 
we'll actually get more time with Miles, and that's why I think the next movie is going to be spectacular. Mm-hmm. Had to do it. Yep. Had to do it. Um. Also, just real quick, because we totally forgot to mention it. Just need to mention it real quick. Peter B. Parker and Mayday. Oh, dude, Mayday was God, amazing. God, I completely forgot about Peter B. Parker and Mayday. Oh, dude. Yeah. And it's crazy because Mayday is also another uh, another character I grew up with. The the Sp- the MC2 Spider-Girl series was amazing. It's the only successful yep. series out of that universe. It lasted for like a hundred some odd issues. It was great. Mayday is awesome. I love seeing baby Mayday and Peter with the baby Bjorn. And the cute yeah. little moment where like... You know, Gwen's waiting outside, and Peter's just like, don't tell mom. And she pulls down her fucking spider mask. <laughs> oh, it's so yeah. cute. Oh, her makeshift great. mask, because it's actually a hoodie. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a hoodie. Little... It's a little knitted cap on her head. It's great. Yeah, it's yep. adorable. That Peter making dad jokes, amazing. Mm-hmm. Just oh, perfect. Also, oh, also his MJ also, I know... is hot as fuck. Like, MJ is always yeah. hot. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, MJ is always hot, but that particular MJ was like, if, damn. if that particular MJ and Peter only make Mayday, that Peter is mm. God problem, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And mm-hmm. uh, and I know this grim, dark, super boss version of Miguel was not the best, but one of the favorite scenes with them was with Mayday. Uh huh. Oh, oh! I do oh. love, I do love the joke with the elevator. That shit was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. But one of the things that uh, apparently it, it it just confused me greatly because Lydia is a thing from uh, twenty ninety nine. Yeah. That's connected to Miguel, and her relationship with Miguel is hysterical to me mm-hmm. because. My memory of Lydia wasn't like she wasn't as catty to him. No, well, yeah, they're, they're, it, they're, it really they're helps understand how fun. dour he is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. To be fair, Miguel wasn't even that dour in twenty ninety nine. He was just an arrogant bastard. Right. Yeah, but this ver this version's a lot more like brooding vampire than, you know. Oh man, that ass that head. one scene where it's just like him silhouetted about to take a bite mm-hmm. at a Da Vinci Vulture. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, that was yeah. That like I I I want that as a poster. That would be a real cool glow in the dark poster. And only the teeth glow. Yeah, exactly. See, Brian, you knew exactly what I was thinking. All right. Well, you know, I'm glad we. Got, I I'm glad I got to get that out. Uh, because Me too. Well, because it's, like it's catharsis. I've been, like I because. I, I saw this but I saw this before uh, you know the rest of the panel and I so I've been stewing in this for like two weeks and I was like man I like you know the more I think about it the more I I actually I was like when I first saw the movie I was like man I'm gonna have a hard time to figure out uh, talking about things I didn't like about the movie and so I was like I gotta find something. And then I found one thing, and I just started pulling at the threads, and it was just like, oh. Oh. Okay. But, still, overall, love the movie. Uh, like, highly recommend it. I think this is just going to be the awkward middle child of an amazing trilogy. But, still worth seeing for sure. Go see it in theaters. You're cheating yourself out of a great experience if you just wait for it on, uh, you know, digital release. Go watch it. Uh, so yeah, our next episode, next week, we will be uh, tackling the boxing K-drama, Bloodhounds. It looks awesome. It's got this, like, delinquent punk from the streets, takes up boxing to avoid l- the gang life kind of thing, which is classic underdog boxing story. Oh, yeah. And, like, dude... With with these with these Korean productions and action scenes, they're always just phenomenal. 
I've all, I've, you know, I've only seen Korean martial arts movies, so I cannot wait to see how they handle, like, boxing, which is a lot more, like, visceral in terms of combat, because, like, you, if done right, you should be able to feel the impact of every punch, and it's just, it, I, I hope this is, I hope this is as good as the trailer but, looks. I watched the first episode, really solid, can't wait to cover, uh, can't wait till next week where we cover it. Yeah. Yeah. Like and damn, here. was that a good trailer! Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You, uh, also, it was so good like, that it made us, it made us say, "Oh, we're gonna cover that." Yep. And then we realized it was so close. Oh yeah. Uh, wait, wait. I was prepared for hood rat shit. And uh, I'm gonna uh, watch also, shit. also coming up, we are going to be covering uh, Kong Skull Island, the uh, Netflix animated series. That uh, shit looks cool as fuck. Like. It looks like in, like, the Castlevania-type Netflix animation style, so there's money in that. And it's giant fucking monsters, fu uh, like, beating the shit out of each other. Who doesn't want to see that? And it's confirmed to be in the same universe as the Kong Skull Island Godzilla New Universe. Yep, yep, yep. Ooh, monsters. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's in the monster, it's in the legendary monster verse. so yeah, that's pretty dope. Uh... Really excited to really excited to cover that. We got a, we got a lot of fun stuff coming up. Uh, oh, just as a heads up, because I know people are going to ask this because we are comic book nerds. Um, we are going to eventually cover the Flash. However, we are not covering it while it is in theaters because I'm not supporting that motherfucker. <laughs> no, it's coming on Max for free essentially. And none of that goes to him. So I'm going to wait for it to come on to Max, and then we can talk about it. Because I do want to see Michael Keaton uh, back as Batman. That sound, that looks fucking awesome, and I can't wait to see and that. And Batfleck. It's it's almost not worth two Ezra Millers. Yep. But yeah, it's Michael Keaton. Yeah. It's, it's and, Michael Keaton. And, and Batfleck is honestly pretty awesome. So, like, I, want, I, I really want to see those two interact. Mm -hmm. But, like, I'll wait. I'll wait. We will do it, you guys, but we're not doing it right now. Just, just want to put that out there, because I know questions will be asked uh, about it, because it, it, it's, the, it's, the it's the big topic within comic circles right now, because the premiere just happened. Which, by the way, he fucking showed up at the premiere somehow. Like, balls okay. on him. But yeah, so we'll we'll be cover we'll be covering that eventually. So you know we'll get there. Uh, but we got we have a lot of, we have a lot of good stuff on uh, on the table. Uh, there are a lot of big blockbusters. Uh, but we're probably not gonna cover everything. Although we'll like we'll oca we'll occasionally like cover stuff on screen time. Like I plan on seeing uh, Transformers: Rise of the Beast because Beast Wars was my generation. So I I, I got I gotta see. How they handle the Maximals and shit. Nice. So, oh, I gotta see that. Nice. Yeah. So, and I mean, it stars the main human is Anthony Ramos, and that dude has been killing it. Yep. And they got Ron. Ooh. They got Ron Perlman to voice uh, Optimus Primal. So. Wait. What? Yeah. For real. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Ron Perlman is the yep. voice of yep. Optimus Primal. Primal. Well, fuck me sideways. I need to get a ticket. Yep. No. And uh, the the female Primal. I forgot which one she is. Is uh, Michelle Yao? Yeah, uh, are, yeah. Uh, oh no, you, you're ta you're talking about uh, yeah, you're talking about Air Razor. Yeah, Michelle Ra Michelle Yao was Air Razor. Oh, yeah, Michelle My bad. Michelle Yao was Air Razor, and the RC is also in it as well. RC is finally making her debut. So Transformers nerds, definitely go check it out. Uh, also to to dissuade anybody's fear of oh no, it's more Bayformers. This is apparently in the same uh, continuity as the new Bumblebee movie. This is part of that soft reboot that they started with that. So don't I mean, worry about for those it being that haven't to seen, that bullshit. For those that haven't seen the trailer, it's literally set in the 90s. Yep. So don't worry about that. Uh, but yeah, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll, ta I'll talk about it once I see it. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but yeah, thanks, Cap, for being on. We we appreciate having you on. It was a, it was a lot of fun. Always a pleasure to come by, and 
I'll be happy to return for Flash if you want me to help you guys bitch about that thing, because, oh boy, oh, yeah. will I be, yeah. I have things to say, I'm sure. For sure. And we'll definitely, we'll definitely try to bring you back for the, uh, for the follow-up for, uh, for Beyond the Spider-Verse as well, when, uh, when that comes oh, out next year, for sure. Yep. But yeah, uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. Do all the usual YouTube things, like, comment, and subscribe. We are bringing the channel back fully, uh, we do have plans to do uh, do stuff in the future outside of just the podcast. I've been I've been ta- I've been talking about uh, do- doing stuff and some extra content for you guys down the line. So stay tuned for that. I'll uh, I'll make some announcements at some point. Also, uh, if you don't want to see my uh, if you don't want to see my ugly mug and you just want to watch me play video games, go check me out on Twitch. Uh, I I can transform into a, a pirate over there, and you know you can watch me. Play gotcha games, get salty, or you know, play uh, Yakuza Ishin, which, like a dragon Ishin, is amazing. Uh, like, go check that out. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Mr. JBT. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for joining us. Until next time, we'll catch you guys across the Channel Chasers verse. Peace. <laughs>